Well, well good, good evening, evening, everyone, and everyone, thank, thank you for your patience, both here in Council Chambers and also and those, who those who are participating by Zoom. By Zoom. Um, we're just we're about, just about to, open to open up the, up the planning board, planning board meeting board in Northampton North 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 for August 24, 2023. This meeting is being recorded. Some of the technology is not working. Our usual screens and Council Chambers aren't able to interact with the presentation. So, so some of some us of will us be will moving, be around, moving the around the room, looking at plans, looking at plans. although the although plans, the plans by, the by the applicants will be shared there um, um, for the people, for the people on Zoom, Zoom. So there will so be, there will some, be screen some screen sharing. sharing. Um, um, so, again, so again, patience is needed, is needed especially those out there in, there in Zoom, Zoom land as we as work, we work this. through this. So, so our, our, before we start, before we start the meeting, there are it's a pretty busy night, night tonight. We have at least five applicants in front of us, but traditionally, but traditionally we open up the podium, the podium to anyone who has any public, public comment about items, about items that are not related to the, the agenda, agenda items before us today. Us today. So, so if you have, if you have comments about other, about other uh, if you have comments about the agenda items, you will have your to speak during open public comment period. But if somebody wants to talk about Herbivores, herbivores or mosquitoes or, mosquitoes or, or something, else. something else, please come, please forward. come forward. Okay, okay. hearing, hearing none, none and care. Is, is there anyone that you can see on Zoom, Zoom who wants to make, wants a, to make a comment? In chat, um, let's see. I don't see any chats. Very, Very good. good. Well, hearing, well, hearing none, none, then we'll, then we'll move, move to our first, to our item, first tonight. item tonight, um, um, which is a a, a continue, uh, continuation from June 22nd, June 22nd of a request for a site for a plan of affordable, for affordable housing, 350-612, with, with two family, family with a two family, family by the city of Northampton, Northampton the, applicant. the applicant, for a parcel, parcel on every road, Leeds, Leeds, map ID 11A2. A2. This is, this is a, a site, site plan, plan review. review. We need a we simple, need a simple majority, majority of both for this application to pass. Um, great. great. So, so is uh, the applicant here, from, here the from the city to present, to present the, plans. the plans? Welcome. Welcome. Uh, good evening. I'm just going to share the plans on the screen, which you cannot see here. Um, but I put them out there, and then um, there is a plan set here. Um, for the board, thank you, my assistant. This is Keith Benoit from the planning office. I'm Daryl Mitch from the planning office. Um, and we're doing a super hybrid meeting tonight. Sorry about this. I have a little one. Um, I think I'll be good. Um, can, can you read so that? this lot, um, on Evergreen was formerly, um, a parcel that contained the city's water tank and has since been removed. Um, the, it is smaller just by a um, few square feet, smaller than a single family house lot that's allowed in the urban residential A district. Um, so it's not, it couldn't be built for anything unless um, an applicant were to come forward for an affordable housing project that would be at least 50% affordable housing. Um, and the provisions in the code require a site plan review by the planning board in order for a structure to be um, built on this parcel. And um, the um, essentially the board would be asking, um, being asked to waive the minimum lot size requirements for the purposes of creating affordable housing and the requirements in the zoning um, state that at least 50% of the units would need to be affordable. So as a two unit that's proposed, one of the units would have to be deed restricted for affordable housing. This came before you in June um, with a proposed um, layout that's the same as what's in front of you now, except there was an issue with the sewer line location um, because there is no sewer exactly in front of this parcel. So sewer would have to be extended from the existing manhole and evergreen. So we needed to um, 
go back to the engineers and have them look at the uh, feasibility of doing that. So that's why it was continued from June to this date so that we could do that. It is now um, shown on the plans where the sewer line could be extended and we think that's feasible. So um, the city's goal in this is to get this all pre-permitted for housing and then put the property up to bid for a developer that would provide at least one of the units as affordable housing meet the standard uh, in this environment. So normally the applicant shows us some elevations, what the, the finished product might look like, but in this case, we're not improving because whoever the, the builder, builder is, is, whether it's Habitat, Habitat for Humanity or someone, or someone else. So in the application, there is a proposed um, layout of a plan that shows um, elevations that would meet the standards that could change, but they're pretty specific about the, um, the zoning is very specific about that um, design criteria. And of course, it also has to meet um, the um, electric utility requirement um, and all of those you can either request to see final elevations when an applicant is um, when the end user is coming forward to de develop the parcel or leave it for um, city staff review to make sure it's compliant with the standards uh, should the design change but the idea is to have this site free permitted so that um, someone could come in, purchase, build it, and then uh, sell that one to the end users. What's the floor area of each unit? Um, the, the floor area or square footage? Whatever you want to tell me. Um, the total footprint for both. Um, sorry, I'm going to do these plants in a little bit. Um, and incidentally, I should say that um, the setbacks um, are being met on the parcel. So this is 15 and um, 20. So it's a 27 by almost 40 foot um, footprint. Um, so and maybe So the total is a, so the total living area is about nineteen hundred, so under two thousand. Tell us a little bit about the parking on the lot. Um so the parking um, would be tandem parking on, on the parcel. Um, and so you could have stacked sort of one or the other. Um, the only, there's only, um, or you could do side by side. And given the square footage for each, technically there needs to be two parking spaces because it's just over the thousand square feet. Okay. That might shift, of course, depending on who the buyer is. Mm -hmm. If someone like, you know, it really depends. Habitat likes to do single family homes. I don't know if they'd be interested in this. And this isn't something that we have a, a ready buyer. Right. Um, so it might take quite a bit of time. Right. In fact, we'd want to set up the sewer get the sewer extended there before it was um before we put on the line so there are all of those sort of utility details were yeah. addressed. So we don't know who the end user would be. So that might change as well. But we want the flexibility to have you know two units for a seat. Mm -hmm. And yeah. at the square footage is two units. I'm sorry, two parking spaces total required or two per unit? Per, because it's about one per thousand square feet. This is just over the one per thousand square feet at about 1,050 square feet per minute. So we asked about parking because it's usually one of the neighborhood's bigger concerns. And I think every road parking is allowed on the street. I don't think there's any no parking um, stipulations there. 
Right. So the issue would be during snow emergencies, you want to have space to. Oh, well, yeah. yeah. Good. Good. Um, any, any tree calculations, calculations at all? It's not out of every wooded lot. lot. There, there was, was one, one dead tree, tree that came, came down. Um, there, I know there's a smaller story. story. There's a stone wall there. So there's um, the all the vegetation at the rear is um, is in the setback. So this is pulled forward at that setback. But certainly, it would be appropriate to have tree protection measures required, as you know, to be installed before construction to ensure that there's no, you know, construction vehicle parked there and those um, that vegetation. Other Are there questions from the board, board before we open, open it to the public? public? All right. So at this, so at this point, point, we welcome, welcome folks, folks to come, come forward, forward like to speak in, in favor of the application or, or any questions or opposed to it. Please, then, you can give us your name and address so that, that we can have a good minute. To this day, I've never received any formal communication from the city about what's going on purchased my property in June 2021. And the only things I've ever heard about any of these plans have been the kindness of the neighbor on the other side um, was kind of kept in the But otherwise I've never received any postcards, flyers, communication from the city. And I was told and reassured by both the seller's agent and my agent that they bought the property Yes, that lot would have been permanently undeveloped because it was the water works. And I would have been really loath, reluctant to buy my property if I'd known that 16 feet from my back door, where my son and I would work on a garden, there would suddenly be a structure on the highest point in the neighborhood that would block out all of our sunlight. And it's just, of course, very dismaying that all of a sudden a structure will go up on a 0.11 acre lot that's about as wide as three cars. That you know, we, uh, my son, my neighbor's kids sled on and enjoy watching birds in and, you know, I do wonder whether any kind of ecological impact assessment is done on the lot as well, because it's the one corridor in the neighborhood to the conservation area that butts us and is by the Mill River and the bike path. Um, and uh, so I'd be remiss not to bring that up as well, but, you know, it, Really, I feel like I've been left in the dark this entire day. I've received no communication from the city about what's going on here. So this look at the plans tonight was the first we've ever seen of, of you know, what might be going on right a few feet from the back of my house. Oh, yeah. So it's just sort of yeah. shocking to, to be. I, I, I really, I really I appreciate your concern, concern that you may have fallen, fallen into the, the cracks, cracks, unfortunately. I think other neighbors, neighbors that are here, here all did receive the public hearing notice. notice. I believe, I believe there's, there's, you know, you know for, for lack, lack of a, a, a great awareness, awareness there's, there's a, a yellow, yellow sign posted, posted up there, there at the lot that, that talks about, about this hearing. hearing. No. I haven't that, that. We, we live on either side of the uh -huh. lot. Uh -huh. okay. 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 Well, well maybe, maybe we would move because, because, you know, know it's... it's, it's, it's yep. 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 Sure, sure. sure. So, so no, uh, we, we apologize then that you didn't receive the postcard. How that happened, I'm not sure. Um, it's a different mailing address, address or just, just somehow your address didn't get, get to um, the records department as your neighbors did. Um, so, so for that, we can't, can't really, I can't give you an explanation now. now. And there are other concerns we'll bring up during the discussion. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Rachel Baker and Probably nice too. <laughs> probably. Um, and I'm just going to open my notes here. Um, uh, so I have a little bit of a different perspective because I've been in this situation for a while. So I want to fill you guys in on some history that I don't think was shared. And you seem really lovely. And this is not personal. <laughs> by our, by our current uh, vendor. Mm -hmm. Um, so a, a significant number of neighbors actually met with the former director 
Um, so I don't know if there's any like written history from mm -hmm. that that you've been made aware. Um, and so there were a good a good chunk of us that stood there on a cold winter day wearing our COVID masks and um, you know discussing taking a look at the lot. And he was really wonderful. He showed us the what I guess were the former plans. Um, and we had a really long discussion about how we weren't going to be those people that were like, we're for affordable housing, but not in my backyard, right? And so we all were in support of affordable housing. There was some hesitation. There was talk of, you know, an ecological impact assessment. You know, I think we would want to see that. But um, and there was talk of a park, but come on, we haven't built a park there in the last 20 years, 30 years since the water narrow was there, right? Um, and so after our conversation, he kind of said to us, you know, in most of the other places where we're doing something like this, the neighbors are against it. When you guys are for it, you're offering to volunteer if Habitat builds it, builds it. But what I'm hearing from you is your concern is the two-family house and the parking and things like that. And so we left that meeting with the understanding that that would be taken into account, right? And then this postcard comes to the meeting in June and saying two-family home. And I get it, I get the logistics, I understand about the, you know, offsetting the cost of building it. Um, but putting a two-family home, again, at the, at the highest point of the neighborhood, significantly altering the landscape, the look of the neighborhood, the shade, the, you know, um, on a very tiny lot. And I cannot figure out where the driveway is on that diagram. I don't know if what the people online saw was a little more specific. I was trying to see the screen for my seat. Um, but I, I don't understand how a driveway could even be on that lot with that size house. Um, I also am under the impression from speaking with a Habitat employee that Habitat for Humanity came and did a site visit and will not take on this project. Um, and that felt like a significant change in information for the neighborhood because a reputable organization that can do a single family home is pretty different from some for profit, I don't even know what developer um, that, that makes one affordable and the other really expensive, right? right. So that initial meeting had been about affordable or attainable housing. So sorry to go on and on, but that feels like a shady way for North Hampton to do business. And I don't think North Hampton would do that. It doesn't feel like something that, you know, we involve the neighbors, we get their input, we say we're going to honor it, and then we like, you know. Um, the next last bit, I'll say, um, no, actually, that's it. Thank you, Thank you, so Thank much. you very much. Thanks for coming up. Any, Any other, other comments? comments? Anybody else? Yeah. Can I? Can I speak? Um, Is there anyone who would not on Zoom, Zoom who would, would uh, like to raise their, their hand using the toolbar? It's the chat. Or the, oh, I'm sorry, the chat feature. I, I have chats? my hand. Okay. I have my hand. You don't receive and I uh, verbal comments. You have audio, audio from, from the Zoom participants. participants. Okay, from Andrew Griffith. Would like to comment on plan for 14 Evergreen when appropriate. Okay, Greg Baker, can you ask folks to mute their computers at home? <laughs> um, yeah, there's no one can un, no one should be able to unmute um, at home, but I will check that. Um, uh, Mosey's mobile. Um, permission to speak. So chat comments will be read by myself or the chair. So if you want to put a comment in the chat, we can read that. Nan S. George's laptop mic may be on as well as the desk mic causing an echo. Okay. Um, so um, Greg Baker asked, well, the comments I emailed on June 13th that were supposed to be read at the initial hearing be read at this hearing. Um, comments that are emailed are in the public record and the planning board sees those, those comments emailed are not read, so, but they're still part of the public record. Um, okay. Um, Greg Baker, hello, and thank you for informing our family about the plans for the lot next door. 14 Evergreen Road, despite the fact that this lot is regularly used by neighborhood residents for various activities and the inevitable inconvenience of having new construction adjacent to our property, we're excited that new affordable housing will be constructed in our lovely neighborhood. That said, the issue of developing two units is a major concern, which we also brought up at a meeting on a site about a year ago. The lot is very small with a fire hydrant 
on the lot and it is unlikely to allow for enough parking for what could be at some point four to eight cars. This would mean street parking on an already narrow neighborhood street that children regularly use um, for biking. The added vehicles would also be unsafe, unsightly, and would likely lead to our own property value decreasing. The lot would be much more reasonably used for single family dwelling. Please reconsider the plans to construct. Um, Moses Mobile, I'd like to echo the comments on my two neighbors. I'm at 46 Chestnut, directly across from the lot. A unit this size will block light, the view, and there may be too many cars packing into our small corner. And I think that was the last comment. Um, so I can definitely speak to this change from the conversation, the public conversation um, with the neighborhood a, over a year ago. Um, certainly at that time, I had, I had another comment. Um, we had had read. conversations with um, um, Habitat to see if they might be interested in this. And there were some concerns about what might still be underground that they might have to deal with with construction so it's uh, it's an accurate statement that um at that time habitat said they were not interested so the issue about transitioning to two units is if it goes to an um a builder that is a um that builds market rate housing um then in order to offset some of those costs and do 50% of the units as affordable, then um, you really sort of need two units to make that viable. So if it's not going to be a single family home that's subsidized, built by a nonprofit like Habitat, then it's really not going to be developed um, for affordable housing unless there's another unit there. So that's sort of the thinking behind the transition to um, two units. Um, Great. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Other questions from the board? Too late to ask the question. No, not at all. Oh, yes, come on up to the podium. Just so state your name again. Rachel Baker. We wrote. Um, my question there is like, so you're actually voting to waive requirements because of the small plot size, right? Because this would be for affordable housing. Right. So if only 50% of those units are for affordable housing, you, can you still do that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then um, the other question is, Is do you all have access to a diagram that shows where the driveway would be and where the other driveways come out on the street? Is it, it shows the other driveways too? So I, I'm just, the concern is just wondering, again, where the on street parking would be and where driveways come out and... Yeah, the proximity to a stop sign at intersection as well. Right. Yeah. Thank you. By the parking enforcement officer, somebody can't park next to a driveway within so many feet, next to a fire hydrant, next to an intersection. So the people that they live there, if your neighbors came to visit, when they park, they have to be mindful of all of those. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Just again, yeah. tiny lot, tiny where this driveway that has two. Parking spots for each unit would fit in that, in that tiny bit of street. Right. Right. I know, I'm not, yeah. not seeing the yeah. driveway. I appreciate the it. Thank you. Thank you. So, and I'll just give a little context to your neighborhood too. Um, for the longest time, that was a big patch of open space woods where now the Beaverbrook Estates are. And there was a huge concern about the increased traffic from that development which the neighborhood over time has accepted, down about 100 yards from this proposed development, the Yankee Hill condos has about 30 units, a lot of traffic, a lot of multifamily units. Um, houses have been built catty corner from this house on the lots there, up and down the street. So yeah, so it's a very desirable neighborhood. It's gonna be, you know, that's why uh, another family would like to move in there. That's why it's a, it's, a, it's a prime opportunity for how to... Sorry. Also, there's a couple more chats. Okay. Unless Good. you want to go here. Yeah. Okay. 
So a couple more chat comments. Um, Gwen Nabad. Um, hi, Carolyn. I'm in support of this project for the uh, purpose of more housing to support the infill. I'm curious if there could possibly be two tiny homes rather than a large structure. As well, I would want there to be a tree study because there are lovely tall old trees around there. Um, Moses Mobile, please reconsider the plans. My name is Maureen Sun McNally. Um, Gwen about again, I remember that this is being a troubled property, but I'm full support of this affordable housing. Greg Baker, additional question, why can't we do 100% affordable housing and just one unit? So in terms of the trees, Carolyn, is there anything that is expected to come down that is of that diameter that would make I didn't notice any on the lot when I was there. Um, no, and but again, I think it's appropriate to have a you know pre-construction tree protection for that edge that's in the rear setback. Mm -hmm. For sure. I mean, now that things are geared up, would have that the community be interested in taking on this project? I, you know, I don't know. They've got a lot of projects in Northampton right now. Um, they certainly, you know. We're not ready to put it out to like, as I mentioned, it's not ready to be sold because there's some still some issues that need to be addressed, particularly the sewer line extension. So um, we'd certainly ask again, but um, as far as I know, they're the only player in town that's doing single family homes at, yeah. uh, that are affordable. So um, if they aren't interested and they may never be, if the planning board approves this for a two family, can they take that approval and build a one family? Or do they need to come back to us to? No, you can always do less than the approved. Right. And then, sort of, to speak about the two tiny units, you know, we've for small single family um, homes, they're usually some of the units that have like the backyard ad uses doing are 800 to 900 square feet this is just a thousand square feet per unit um in total 1900 square feet is just above the um median house size for a single family home so um this is certainly not out of scale from the um median across the city for, I mean, and that's a single family, whereas this would be two units. Another question for the applicant. We look at any other comments from the public. I think we addressed most of the comments from the chat. We, we heard your concern, sir. Move to close public hearing. Second. Public comment. Okay, which means we can't question the applicant any more one. All right, thank you. Last look at the plan. Carolyn, uh, before we do that, is there already lighting proposed for this? Nothing out of the ordinary that, no. Just typical house okay. lighting. Just one more quick question. If Please, I'm come on up. And Malolo again. Is there any way that I'll have access to look at these plants after tonight? Will be available online. They are available online. All the applications are online. Um, yes, yes, appreciate it. So I okay. think we can get you a link to the public depository um, where everything is accessible. Okay. Yeah. And the link is on the agenda as well. Okay. Ah. You've gotten all the chats, right? Sorry, I was getting messages about things not being read, but. Oh. And yep. Griffin is waving his arms. Yeah. Um, there yes, are, that is who is text. Or, yeah, that's who's text. There were three chats that came in. Let's not close. I object. My comment was not read. Andrew Griffith, I so, think I yeah, read. Yeah, so he had one regarding the park was very small. And I'm concerned that is that with two failing and two small. Um, um, yeah, I saw. I saw there was a comment that said I from him would like to comment on the plan for Evergreen and uh I yeah 
Sure. Sure, you'd be Andrew. For um, a actually, he, I see something else. Regarding this parcel, it's very small. Primary concern is that with two family, it just popped in. Um, it's very likely people will park on the street. Currently, street is communal space where people chat, walk, play. Street parking is allowed, but not common on the street. This would negatively impact the community space. It's hard to see how this plan will fit the proposed development. Good. Okay, there's a motion made to close the public hearing. There's a second. Okay. Dan, any discussion? I'm just going to note that I'm recusing myself from this hearing, so I'm not going to vote on this. Okay, and what is your rationale? For I'm, a, I'm the butter. I'm a postcard receiver. Okay, very good. He got your postcard. You got two. <laughs> Uh, oh, in the email you wrote, you said you got a postcard. The public no, we got the postcard. They sent you the postcard. All right, all in favor with one, all in favor of closing the public hearing. Plus, okay. Um, other questions, discussion? We're okay, but may or may not. To me, it feels like we're okaying either a two family or no development. So, and I would rather okay a two family that includes one affordable unit than nothing at all. I also just want to say for the record that I live in a two family home on a lot that is 0.12 acres and it is plenty big enough. And we have cars there. It's also on a street that has no overnight parking and you just make it work. Um, it is small, but it works. So, um, we desperately need housing of all forms in our city, affordable and otherwise. So if the trade-off is to get the affordable unit and something else, I think that's just something that our city needs. And we would be approving it to allow the to allow it to move forward. And it could still, somebody like Habitat could still come in and build a single family. We're just being, we're just allowing either or. Or a two family. Or a two family, yeah. right? I mean, we're just and it's not, or, or a neighbor could buy the lot, the, the land, and do nothing on it. Theoretically, they could make a, a, a bid to the city and dangle a big carrot in front of them, but yes. No, because they want to be affordable housing. Right. That's, that's how you're right. proving it. Right. Sorry. Correct. Sorry, I don't want to. <laughs> All right. This property um, was um, one of uh, a couple that was surplused last year for the purpose of trying to take these sort of uh, unusual pieces of property and try and add to our affordable housing stock. So, you know, I'm in favor of trying to make it work. Good. All right, good. And we're all, we all recognize that uh, the plan we're accepting now are, you know, an, an idea of what might be built there um, and pretty close to what would be, but in, in the future, if a uh, uh, construction organization did come through the bill, they would work with the city to make sure that they are in line with the spirit of those things. Okie doke. I don't think there are any conditions to our this tree protection. Tree protection. Thank you. And do we need to condition about whether it's coming back to us if there are material changes to the design versus just a staff review, or is that? Um, typically, um, there's a determination made if it's substantially different in design, then it would go back either for an administrative amendment or a full blown, you know, amendment. So if it's, or if they're just minor design changes and they, and, and it still meets the code, I would say it wouldn't need to come back, would not need to come back. But, but we don't need to condition that. Thank you. Right. Okay. So just the condition that tree protection needs to be installed prior to the beginning of construction. Um, and there's no stormwater, there's no comments from the DPW other than regarding the store, the sewer. Um, right, actually, let me just double check because we got something in late today. <laughs> so they did have a comment about the sewer line not being properly shown, of course. Um, um, 
it would need to meet the DPW standards for design. So that would, um, you know, they made comments about how the design doesn't show compliance and that it would have to do that. So I think that's doesn't need to be a condition of the permit because there's no way that any construction in the public right of way could happen without complying with their standards. Um, yeah. Good. Okay. Right. Um, other discussion or a motion? Um, I move to approve the site plan for affordable housing, um, a two family with affordable housing on Evergreen Road in Leeds, map ID 11A 2, uh, with the um, Condition, thank you, of um, tree protection. A second. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Any other board discussion? All right. All those in favor of the motion? For an approval, Chris Tate recused. Thank you very much for coming. Um, again, on the agenda, if you could see a copy of agenda, it has a link directly to the plans. Um, Carolyn's very receptive to questions about if if the one construction does begin. Thanks. Welcome your new neighbors if and when they come. Good. Very good. All right. So at this point in time, the Northampton Planning Board is going to hear a site plan, special permit, no, a special permit major site plan amendment for a shared driveway layout on a two-family, sorry. No, are we doing cook first? Did I jump yeah. over one? Oh, okay. Okay, thank you very much. I did. Come on back, Keith. <laughs> Site plan special permit for affordable housing creation of more than six parking spaces. Again, the applicant is the city of Northampton, and this is at 196 Cook Avenue, Northampton map ID 1822. It's a site plan review. So again, we need a simple majority of the planning board members to approve this application. A plan sheet here. Uh, so yeah, uh, this uh, parcel 196 Cook Ave, uh, you may know it as the former Moose Lodge. There is no more Moose Lodge, uh, but this is part of the housing choice grant that we got from the state uh, to take four unloved, very funky parcels that uh, the city owns that need some work to get them developed already. Um, so it's 2.815 acres. Um, currently, it is uh, just a dirt. Pay, uh, kind of a uh, loose parking area for the Broadbrook Greenway. Um, and really, a proposal is to do uh, two phases. And one will be the construction of uh, or the installation of the electrical conduits that will serve the future habitat homes. They are the winning bidder for the houses. Um, and then uh, the construction of the, or the building of a paved parking lot of uh, 21 spaces. Uh, that all needs to happen. Um, by June of 2024 for the grants that spend all down. Um, and then the second phase will be kind of selling that um, grants from the land to Habitat. And in the future, sometime uh, in probably the next couple of years, they're going to build uh, up to four uh, single family homes for first time home buyers. Um, this uh, second plan, it, it meets all requirements under the uh, point dash 6.12 for single family homes. Um, and I'm showing on the screen uh, the old Moose Lodge. Uh, we, we removed it about two years ago now, the CDG fund. Um, and this project has a couple impacts. So one, we're gonna get um, four deed restricted single family homes, first time home buyers. 
uh, all these are going to use uh, per the um, affordable housing bill, all use um, energy, source, energy sources from uh, red supply electricity, electricity, no fossil fuels. Um, the overall project, uh, right now, it's just really hard at dirt, and it's a funky sex. So there's two sides, wetlands, and then um, rock. Um, and the, the bulk of the parcel is a lot of spark and dirt. So we're going to actually reduce the impervious surface of the lot. Uh, and we're going to increase water quality. And we're going to have some stormwater treatment chambers um, to uh, flow off the parking lot. Uh, we're going to formalize the parking at Broadbrook Greenway. Broad, 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 broad Greenway. Uh, right now, it's just kind of no man's land, wild west. Uh, we're going to get some nice clean lines and everyone's going to park right in the lines. Uh, we're going to add uh, some bike parking, uh, two accessible parking spaces, and then, yeah, I have the, the permit, the plans up here. I have one printed here. Yeah, screen share. So, uh, yeah, let's the bulk of it. I don't know, but uh, question. Are we carving off the parking lot? So, uh, the, the on the plan, the top portion of the plan here that's going to be the formalized uh parking, where the, and that'll happen first. That'll be city owned, and then the four homes will have their own parking. Um, it'll be very obvious that it's a um, driveway for. Of the homes and in between the parking lot, really hard to be a split rail fence. Um, one of these homes will be ADA accessible, and at least one of them will be visit visitable by someone who is uh, mobility impaired. And it's that extension to the parking lot like a public way, or is so, it just like uh, a shared access agreement between the city and the and the development? Uh, so the Currently, the um, the road and then the the dirt road to the Fitzgerald Lake um, it is needs to be accessible for uh, dam access maintenance. Uh, so that needs to maintain. Um, and then, but yes, it'll be uh, the parking lot that is on the top portion of the plan will be city owned, and then it will transfer to habitat at that line. So I don't know if Keith, you went over this, but the the footprint of the currently disturbed and graveled area is going to shrink with this um, plan, which is visible on the plan sheets and would be projected on the screen if the AV equipment were working. <laughs> um, so we can't show that color mm -hmm. version. The plans were adjusted to meet DPW comments about stormwater. They were concerned about the right now there's sheet flowing into the street but they wanted to um they thought that this would be a project that was important to make better than current sheet flow conditions and so um there's actually a reduction in a parking space i believe from 20 to 19 uh, um, to 21 to 20 um still bike storage or bike loops there but um so all right along up right up until this week there had been sort of one parking um, space count for the public parking and then that shifted to accommodate more stormwater and did i hear there's going to be stormwater retention basins underground no no these no. are above ground okay swales yeah it, and it just those those four houses and it's a large piece of property they can't be shifted that's a large it's, it's a really tight site. There's two sides, uh, what one is it, and then the ledge, very close to the edge. Okay. So we want yeah. to stay away from the buffer, um, stay with the ledge, but also um, kind of allow for. And, and this is wooded well on the ledge. Ledge is very rock. Rock, rock yeah. Rock is rock there. It's almost like there was a quarry there at one point. <laughs> 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 Awesome. Um, and have you been to the Conscom? Have they reviewed your? But you've 
you've flagged it, there's going to be an NOI with the CONSCOM and there, it, there, um, the Conservation Commission meeting is scheduled for September 24th. Then we have to cut a bunch of the that area like where the current news lodge is, there's like no sun. It's behind that is a bunch of big trees. I don't, I don't, I don't see that getting a bunch of soil. Yeah, no, it's pretty wide open right no, no. now. Yeah, the rest of it is. Yeah. Where the Moose yeah. Lodge is, where Moose is, um, is happening. It's and that's the trees. north side where the Moose Lodge was. Yeah. Right. But that's the north side. So the solar would be oriented to the south where it's open. Um, so the city will own this lot and they'll maintain it during the winter? Or is there plans for, or is it going to partner with Beaver Brook? Uh, Listen, the, the parking lot. I mean, so yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then we assume like in the, the second half of the housing is they'll have their own kind of association that will maintain the road there and the landscaping. I can clarify the question about the DPW. So there's no commitment from DPW to apply. This is going to be owned by the city. Um, the plows come up, cook, and have to go somewhere. Okay. Um, it seems from my lay snow plowing experience that it would make sense that they just keep going straight and push the snow to the end. There was an informal understanding that, but uh, that it might just be easier for the plow operators to do that. But that's just me, who's never driven a snow plow. Yeah. So it's to be determined. Yeah. But they have an issue now, is what I'm saying. Is they come to the end to that driveway now? You can't so, block the roads. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it's a large parking lot. There's utility poles there. Was there some thought about putting in any kind of EV stations? Um. Much as I don't think people who use that parking lot will stay there for too long, but uh, I think when we're seeing looking at new parking lots, we we'll look at. I don't believe it's been discussed, but uh, with this grant, we're on a very tight timeline yep. before we want to get to go to bid next month, get uh, some contractors, and hopefully uh, be constructed and done by right. June for the grant. Uh, and uh, so we haven't had that. Conversation, but right now we're going to be undergrounding the natural graduates for habitat. Um, and that's, I mean, it's not complicating things, but it is that they, the priority is that we get the condos ready before the parking lots first. Right. Okay. And that's, that's all that's needed for future EV charging stations, too, is conduits stubbed up yeah, to a parking area. Yeah. As opposed to maybe where the eighty charging station might be, I I I think the city is really promoting EV EVs and charging. So I think it would be in our best interest to at least put in the future while we're digging up much of that lot uh, to provide at least for the future installation of those. Was, was the conduit, you said the conduit was going to go to the left, like up the driveway? Um, the habitat. Test. Like in the in the 50 foot wetland buffer, like right along that line? Uh, I mean, it hasn't been planned yet. We're um, we just kind of put the application in to National Grid, uh, waiting on their comments back on the size uh, and I mean, the requirements of the houses. Um, you don't know whether what they're going to apply to. Yeah. I'm just sort of follow up on that. So um, it may be that the habitat opts to do that for their, you know, have a charging for their units. We um, don't, 
we're not planning any utilities or any lights in this parking lot because it abuts the conservation area. So there's, um, I think there's some internal conversations about whether it made sense for EV chargers, but in this location, we do not feel that it's appropriate. And we're under, what is it, the 25 space mm -hmm. cutoff yep. where we require yep. EV chargers? Right. All right. Um, I, I, I feel that well, it is appropriate. We're not though, because because if you combine the lot by yeah parking for the Broadbrook, the conservation area, and the residential units, we're up to twenty eight or so. But the, they're two separate users, and the have and so the lot that will be the city lot is under that threshold. The housing units. Um, it right. makes more sense to have the charging units for the people who are parking there overnight. And so this lot is particularly the public lot. So there are essentially two parcels here. We're trying to do, again, the pre-permitting for the affordable housing and then also provide parking that will be the public parking. So it's the public parking lot. Yeah. Yeah, which in time will also be used, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure, by the inhabitants of the four houses when their guests come or it gets crowded mm -hmm. or perhaps the folks from Leeds will split spill over there. But the, the parking lot will be used probably by the, the residents is also the public parking. Um, I, you know, I just think, again, it's in our city is pushing for using the electric grid for moving as much as we can towards electrifying um, cars and, and buildings. Um, I think we're missing an opportunity with a brand new parking lot like this, at least to provide future stubbing from a utility pole. And I know it means putting in a, a meter perhaps in some kind of infrastructure for these things. And we're, I appreciate that you're not lighting the lot, but anytime we have a parking lot of this nature, that's gonna be hard paid. I think the future is what we're looking at around uh, um, charging stations. But I will be dissuaded by the other team members here, for sure, if the city does not have that in their plans. Um, other questions besides? Yeah, I think stubbing up conduits is a pretty low bar. Yep. yep. It's just a little tricky because they're going to break the service into this other lot, and the transformer is going to be for the other lot. And there's gonna be no electricity on this other on the parking lot for lighting or anything. So they'd have to they would they would need to have two services. Yeah, sure. So they would have so, a pole there and they do it with the, the valley bikes off of a pole. They dropped in a meter and a service for that. Um it's it's not a whole lot different than that in, in random places. So but George is even talking about requiring a charging station. He's just talking about putting in conduit from the no to no but the it's, it's just that it's it's going to a different lot they they even put the conduit in you'd have to yeah split it. But split it. but it's easy to put in conduit 30 inches down and you're tearing up the whole parking lot it's a lot harder to do it no, I, I'm always in favor of that. I just think this is a tricky situation because then there's probably a transformer required. Yep. So we want to ask them to put in some empty conduits so that they have the opportunity. I have yeah. no, no issue with that's, that. That's what we're asking. And, and it's not, I don't think, cost in, intensive with the other work that's going to be going on in there. I think we'd just be missing an opportunity. And we're sending a message, you know. To, yeah, you know. I'm, I'm, I'm fine with asking for the conduits. And I think it's fine if we target the two spaces closest to the utility pole, right? You don't have to yeah. run a conduit, right? Right. Anywhere special, it's the closest mm -hmm. spot in the sense. There are two utility poles there. I assume you're going to use the first one and not go to the. There's another one where the, the electricity dead ends down more towards the entrance to that Boggy Brook Road. Um, who knows what's going to happen to that one, but. I assume we're looking at the first one for most of the work. Yeah, I think the assumption is that the farthest one that terminates where the moose lodge was would be with it. So, um, 
So is there any relationship to Broadbrook Conservation Area at all or the organization or their kiosk? Is work going to be done in tandem with them? Have you dealt with them? Um, Visit some old things. They didn't ask about that, but I think there was someone there from from Broadway. So maybe I'll hear something during public comment. Any other questions or should we open it up to the public? And at whatever point you want, there I can read some of the DPW comments or Great. categorize them. All right, so why don't we at this point, um, thanks, Keith, for the presentation. Why don't we open it up to the public? Any folks who want to speak in favor or have questions about the proposal? Yes, thank you. Uh, Stan Molden, uh, I'm here to support the project. Uh, this is, uh, as Keith said, this is a very challenging lot for the ledge and the wetland. And I think the planning department has come up with a, a really a great uh, mixed use for this parcel, maintaining the current, which has been an informal parking area for the uh, Rockwood Greenway, and adding four single family homes. Habitat is Habitat for Humanity is on board with this. Uh, Megan McDonough, the executive director, was at that neighborhood meeting that she mentioned. This is in their pipeline. Uh, that their construction won't start for a couple of years, probably. They are committed to this project, and that part of it has been embraced by the neighborhood. Uh, we had about twenty people there on Tuesday. One of the questions we got was, "Can we put more houses?" Can't because it's too tight a fit. But that has been embraced by the neighborhood. Uh, the uh, the parking, uh, the access uh, to the uh, the greenway, the parking, as Keith said, will be formalized. It's been kind of an informal, chaotic parking lot uh, until now when the city now owns it. The spaces will be marked, will be accessible uh, parking spaces. There will be uh, bicycle parking, and uh, that is sort of maintaining the existing uh, use. The most recent uh, prior use was the Moose Lodge, of course, which uh, when it was active, did generate a lot more traffic than is anticipated and would be generated by four single families. So I, I feel this is a great use for that property. I, I feel that all you know, neighbors have some questions about certain aspects of it uh, involving um, Spillover parking, primarily on Cook Avenue and Pine's Edge, that uh, there is uh, there is uh, very much support for the concept of adding affordable housing. Thanks, sir. Great. Thanks, Council. Mm -hmm. I'm Bob Zimmerman. I live at 549 North Farms Road in Farms, and I'm also the president of the Broadbrook Coalition. Which is the organization that manages the Trail Lake Conservation Area? We call it the Trail Lake Conservation Area um, for the city of Lincoln. I'm going to make a couple of suggestions, recommendations actually, concerning this, um, this project. I think overall, it is the right use for the old Moose Lodge property, and I'm pleased to see that we accommodate both parking for the conservation area, as well as space for the building of habitat for United Republicans. One issue that has come up is that on part of the property, there is a very vigorous stand of a uh, invasive plant called Japanese knotweed. And it's mostly in the area that's going to be acquired by Habitat for Humanity. Our recommendation is that the not be uh, not rid of as soon as possible. It's very invasive. It's uh, likely to spread if it's not contained now. And the proposal 
is written such that uh, the city will be responsible for treating the knotweed that is on city property and the Habitat for Humanity will be responsible for treating the knotweed that's on Habitat property. This is a totally unrealistic approach. It is one major stand of Japanese knotweed. It needs to be treated <clears throat> as soon as possible. There are two avenues for treatment that would be acceptable and fairly effective. One would be to treat it with an herbicide. The recommended herbicide for knotweed is glyphosate or Roundup in its commercial name. And that will take more than one year to eradicate <clears throat> the knotweed if it's, uh, if it's sprayed or treated with herbicide. The other approach is to dig out the area where the knotweed is growing. The recommendation is to dig out to a depth of five to six feet. And this has to extend beyond the area where the knotweed is growing right now, because the rhizomes uh, send out lateral uh, underground essential roots that can extend as far as 20 or 30 feet from the actual stand. So uh, it would be uh, unreasonable <laughs> to divide the responsibility for the uh, for the uh, not we between the city and Habitat for Humanity, because uh, as far as I can see from the map, the not we extends partially into the city property and partially into the future Habitat food property. And to treat it separately by the two entities uh, just doesn't make any sense at all. It's also important to get started on this as soon as possible, because if the herbicide avenue is taking this the way to control the knotweed, it's going to take a couple of years before it's totally suppressed. First year, you can, ex you can expect a suppression of maybe 90%, uh, then it tails off after that. So it's important that that be dealt with. The other recommendation has to do with the parking area or the uh, conservation area. The plans, as I understand them, call for asphalt uh, covering in that parking lot. I would like to argue very strongly for the use of a porous paving. The porous paving is um, permeable to rain and to melted snow, but doesn't create there for a lot of runoff. It's an interesting uh, material that's been used to some extent, very small extent in the city, um, but also at Fisera Lake Conservation Area on one of the access roads. It consists of ground up rubber tires that are bonded together um, with um, some mineral material. It forms a very stable surface. It's, um, uh, as far as I know, it holds up very well for uh, with um, automobile automobile traffic, and the manufacturers actually claim that uh, even trucks can use it safely without disturbing it. If you want to have a look at it, um, just walk in from the North Farms Road entrance to Sarah Lake Conservation Area. There are two short sections which use this material along that, uh, along that pathway. Now, it is somewhat more expensive than asphalt. Keith found that, uh, <clears throat> sent an email out today that said it was about 40% more expensive than asphalt, but it is a far superior uh, surface for the parking lot. So I would strongly recommend that uh, the forest paving be used in that, uh, for that purpose. So those are the two comments that I have. Another environmental concern is the <clears throat> very small stream that runs down on the north side of the uh, present parking lot. 
it's considered an intermittent stream, and I know that there's some people, particularly residents at Pine's Edge, who are very concerned about the possibility that that uh, stream could be filled in or otherwise uh, disturbed. I'm not going to speak to that because I don't have knowledge of the, um, the wetland rules that would govern that, but I did want to raise that as a name for the Pine's Edge people because I know they're quite concerned about that. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else who'd like to make a comment? Harry Reynolds. I live on Maplewood Terrace. I use that area a lot. And I just had a couple. Question number one um, The stormwater runoff from the public park, is it all contained in the water quality units? Or does that get shared between the habitat? I can't answer that. Um, I haven't built into the stormwater plants myself. Well, Keith, the 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 is... curvature of the well, the portion that would be all the parking lot, just do that section at the beginning. Yeah, because uh, the plans I saw before, a significant portion of the parking lot went into the water called the basin or habitat. And my concern is, is it becomes an expense, an, an unnecessary expense that they're going to end up having to be harmful if they have to maintain that runoff from the city park. We might hear more about that when we hear the comments from the DPW later on. And well, I mean, I'm just, if, if that's the case, then would it be possible for the city to contribute to their maintenance or just maintain it for them, yep. that portion? Yep. Um, the other thing is when we're talking about snow plowing, obviously habitat has to plow. Is there can there be a provision to ensure that that snow drip doesn't block the parking lot in the winter? Because the way that works now, it, it doesn't get plowed, but people can get in because there isn't a, a snow bank. Right. You have to drive across. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, okay. It seems pretty commonsensical to most of us that the plow wouldn't do that. Um, but uh, whether we have to itemize that, we can discuss that. Yeah. Yeah. And then finally, I love the idea of pervious pavement. The thing being with that, though, is a high maintenance item. And it will mean that you cannot, the habitat folks cannot sand their, their area. And so that have, that will have to be a restriction if you went down that road. And I imagine the city may not be willing to back in sweep it. That was me. Good assumption. Yeah. So, Thank you. Yeah. Lambert, and I live on Fine Village Drive. And I just want to point out once again. That this is where the intermittent stream is, mm -hmm. the brook is that we love so much. From about October through May, it's running. Um, I hope that I, I, I don't see any uh, plan that protects it. So if I might, Kimberly, so we did talk about uh, the applicant is going to the Northampton Conservation Commission, yep. and they'll be looking over all the wetlands. They certainly have your best interests in heart when it comes to intermittent streams. So if you wanted to attend that hearing, too, you could certainly do that to voice any of your comments. Should the parking lot protect the brook? I agree with everything that Bob said. I hope that uh, we can try and use some pervious uh, forest paving because with asphalt, the, it becomes a heat iron. And the temperature can be raised by seven degrees, impacting the brook and the environment around it. 
we look at Kestrel and Silvio Conti lots in Hadley and Amherst, they have some paved areas, but also some areas that are not asphalt. The other thing I'd like to talk about is the knotweed. Um, there's a good study done by the Department of Agriculture, the New Hampshire Department of Agriculture 2018, um, that explains the impact of knotweed and that a time frame for treatment and development of that area needs to be done. I don't think the people at Habitat should be responsible for removing that knotweed. Um, knotweed can penetrate the ground 10 feet deep. Laterally, it can exceed 40 feet. It has allopathic properties, which are chemical compounds that are released to eliminate vegetative competition. That means there's no native plants in the area where it grows. It displaces native vegetation. It forms dense communities. And even when it's cut, the stems and bits of bits that are left can root. So I hope that the city will develop a three-year management plan, not lay it on habitat to take care of and eliminate that knotweed ASAP. And it does have to be started right away. And again, I hope that um, best environmental practices will be used in going forward with this. And there was no traffic study that combined the habitat homes and the parking lot. And as you know, um, the intersection of Cook Ave and Hatfield Street have been a great concern to that neighborhood for 30 years with nothing done by the city yet. So, the parking lot will impact traffic, and I hope that um, that will be addressed in an updated parking study on the impact of Cook Ave traffic. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Gotcha. Yep. Chat and then okay. DPW. So when Nibad, my question is, what type of material would the parking lot be? Could it be reflective? And I want to put fruit trees or flowering trees in the middle of it. Uh, Mara Bradford, discussion of installing EV charging stations. Um, good evening and thank you for taking my comments. I live in Florence and am a regular user of Fitzgerald Lake Conservation Area, which I most often access at Cook Avenue. That entrance to the conservation area is heavily trafficked, more so than the North Farms entrance, which is the second largest access. On heavy days, there are often 20 to 30 cars in the current Cook Avenue dirt lot. When the North Farms entrance was paved and curbing installed, it restricted parking and resulted in regular overflow to the street on busy days. I expect this will be the same for Cook Avenue when the parking lot is modified to accommodate the proposed four habitat homes on the site of the former Moose Lodge and the parking lot for those homes. The construction and disruption to the public site will be considerable. How does the city propose to ensure continued access for users to Fitzgerald Lake Conservation Area? Question mark. Gwen Nabad, I also agree that there should be one charging station or access to electric for charging. More Bradford, um, sorry, that must have been part of the, it, does, it just says discussion of EV stations aside. And then I guess there's some chat going on between people. So sorry about that. Um, Megan McDonough, um, won't the current utility pole need to be relocated to construct the driveway for the public parking? Um, okay, agreement about the porous pavement, um, but reflective could be good in a different way to avoid heat. Um, and then Gwen says she supports the project. Great. I can answer some of these questions too if you need when you're ready. Sure. And could we hear from the DPW? Yes. So I will say to start off with that, um, there was a lot of, uh, there's been discussion back and forth with DPW over the last week. And as I mentioned, they um, that shifted the um, drainage originally it was all to sheet flow to a little bit to sheet flow to some of the 
swales that were on showing on the habitat side, but most of it primarily would sheet flow back to the street. So that's been shifted now. The grading has changed to sheet flow to, on the city property to a swale and then the rest to Cook Avenue. Um, there won't be any sharing of maintenance responsibilities for the drainage that the habitat lot would um, have for that roof runoff and that parking lot runoff. Um, so those plans were updated just in the last day, and those are on the city's website. Um, their comments were related to correcting the sewer line and water line connection locations. Um, I will also mention just this week, um, DPW had the sewer um, capped at the manhole that's in Cook mm -hmm. Avenue. So that's going to shift where the connection of the water and sewer lines will go. So that's sort of in motion. Again, these are comments related to what will have be required anyway when we go to construction. So as Keith mentioned, the um, we will attempt to go to bid this fall to get construction of the parking lot completed and set up the utility um, lines and the water and sewer connections during that piece. So there's essentially there'll just be stubs for when habitat would be ready to take on the construction, but their comments relate to where to connect. So, um, and um, they're also recommending that water and sewer line crossings, uh, sorry, water service, um, avoid utility crossing with sewer. They're very, it's very tight in there in that driveway opening. But again, these are sort of technical details about what needs to be considered in the final plans. Um, and final um, labeling corrections for the stormwater basins. Um, the planting plan shows trees and shrubs in the location of the interfiltration basin for bay. Trees and sh shrubs are not appropriate on the basin embankments and should be installed outside the stormwater structures. Um, and um, the property owners of the residential lot must inspect and maintain the proposed stormwater system to ensure the system continues to function according to design and in good working condition. The proposed stormwater management operation plan for the post-construction residential property must be revised to add inspection and maintenance of the proposed under drain and the water quality swale. So I would recommend that that be part of the condition of this permit that for when the residential side gets developed that the maintenance ins inspection plan be recorded along with the decision before that um, happens. And that revised plans also be um, submitted that incorporate the corrections to the um, water and sewer line connections and the other utility issues that they raise. Um, on the utility question, yes, the poll is being proposed to be relocated. So there'll have to be a poll, poll petition to do that. So that addresses that question. Great. Um, we went through all the chats. We can talk about the paving in a little while. Oh, uh, Carolyn, may I discuss, and I should know this, but who did the plans for the city that went to the DPW? Berkshire Design Group. So we had hired an engineer to do that. But we don't have anyone from Berkshire Design here to speak to. <laughs> okay. Um, other questions for the applicant? We could try to clarify a few things. So again, we're in this situation much like uh, uh, the one up in Leeds where we're okaying this plan with kind of Ill illustrative drawings and uh for what might be built two three four years from now so often well, the parking it, will be built the parking will be built but not the the housing area so often when it comes to housing we have pretty specific questions around lighting around say play area around uh garbage and recycling around more about specific storm water yeah. um can we will those be addressed later on and will the or is that something you want to try to address now with just this? Yeah, I mean, there's been a lot of work with habit. So habitats, you know, we brought them into the process to and and so this these plans sort of were uh, modified over time. 
they were first for detached unit or two attached units, then detached. And so there's a lot of um, iterations about right. that and the design. So the, what's in front of you is actually sort of what makes sense to Habitat yep. and the, and, you know, they picked sort of the designs they've been working with now on their other. Yep. So they're pretty much, they're locked pretty closely to what, and, and also the layout and thinking about the parking arrangements and the relationships to the units and the areas, the, um, you know, um, where um, snow would be, be removed and what the separation is, landscaping between the parking and the habitat lot. So all of that is much more well-defined than the previous um, permit application. I don't know if you want to add to that. Yeah, so is there a plan? What do they plan to do around, let's just say, um, a play area for these units? I think that's something we're trying to look at when we have housing units like this in this kind of cluster. Is there any kind of green space or proposed... Area. Uh, yes, the play area, there's no play area proposed in the plan. It's very tight space. Yeah. Um, but it's it's gonna be very small yards. Okay. All right. Um and it, it is next to hundreds of acres of <laughs> open space. You let your children run out there with all those snakes and things, yes. Um what about uh the recycling and garbage arrangements? Is there any details? Yeah. Um, so yeah, it, it's just difficult for me to kind of engage with the housing part of this. The parking part I can see very well, but it's hard to kind of talk about the part. And I assume the lighting is just going to be residential lighting, but are they mm -hmm. going to light their parking area for the houses? Are they going to be? No. This represents. They said they weren't going to light the parking area for the the city parking area. But what about? Well, the intention for this was to be the layout that that would be approved. So any, I would say, any additional lighting for the parking lot would have to come back as an amendment. Okay. So, um, and you would just be residential scale lighting on the homes. Are we gonna? Uh... Do you stop people from using the um, the residential parking? I mean, this is, as you said, this is going to take years to, to build. Is there a way of, I mean, people are going to start using this thing and think of it as there? You mean, it looks like there might be a sign here. Yeah. Yeah. If there's a sign that said that. It's supposed to be for the Okay. Okay. Great. And when, when, the housing, when the housing is built, I think it's going to be a big sign. Yeah, it's 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 smart smart smart. Okay. Um, other questions for the applicant? We want to discuss it all, the, the pavement. We've heard some discussion about um, innovative materials rather than uh, regular hard pack Mercatum. I think it's Mercatum. I have no idea what you're saying. It's full. It's full. It's full. It's full. It's full. It's concrete. It's not something we can be discussed. That's what I always think. A lot of these concerns sound like conservation concerns to me. Well, the, the the pavement isn't necessarily, but I will tell you, so the storm, so right now it's completely compact gravel. You can't just put porous pavement on a surface like you can asphalt. It has to, you have to have prepared yeah. soils. Yeah. And, right. And um, it, there's a big maintenance <laughs> um, requirement for that. And they're also, we, the soils were not evaluated even under that to determine whether it would be appropriate for that. Um, but the, this is, um, there's, not, there's of course not, there's a reduction in overall impervious surface in this plan than the existing condition. Um, and there is a maintenance tail that is much more significant with porous. Um, Payment. 
I mean, I'm, I don't feel like you could use that ball here or the problem with that. But it does make sense to just take up the not weed and generally you kill them. I had got rid of the not weed in my own house. Uh, this come back. Um, uh, but, you know, but and that's not so, a planning board yeah. Yeah. Um, jurisdictional piece. And uh, even outside the wetlands, it's not conservation commission jurisdiction. Not weed is definitely all over the city. And we do what we can, even in our conservation areas and along city owned property. But um, it is, um, you know, it is a problem. And of course, if um, we'd want to make sure we're not going to exacerbate the situation in our construction project, for sure. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, I had a little question about how we're reducing the impervious surface. There's no pavement there that ever was with the Moose Lodge. The Moose Lodge had a roof. But what are you calling the impervious surface? Hard the impacted gravel. gravel. Yes, really? it's almost it's it has a curve value almost uh, ninety eight percent versus a hundred percent. It's almost like yeah. okay. okay. All right. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I don't think we can really the knot weed is a huge community, not only this community but all over, and uh, I don't I don't think we can um, put a condition on that the removal. Um, the, the traffic, the impact of traffic of the four units, did we look at that at all? Were there notes from, um, Berkshire yeah. Design or? Yeah. So, we'll add at most four trips per week hour. One every 15 minutes. And we're saying the uh, installation of this new lot will not be in a traction for more traffic along. Yes. It's not changing. But the added houses. Okay. Well, and the previous use of the Moose Lodge also is sort of that's the benchmark is not going from zero. It was recreation area and the Moose Lodge. And there's an understanding that if the um, habitat or another developer starts working on the plans and they deviate largely from what we're looking at tonight, that they'll come back to the board for an amendment around lighting or change of the number of units or things of that nature. But that's not a condition we put in. So currently we have two conditions. One is around the maintenance plans for the stormwater uh, systems that are attached to the housing units. That that has to be, a maintenance plan has to be submitted once they're built to the DPW. And then prior to construction of the city lot, new revised plans have to be given to the DPW around the connections and all of their comments. Um, I, I, there might be a condition that we are uh, supporting the idea of, of providing stubs for at least one EV. Um, how do we follow that? Chris? I'd like to move that we close the oh. public comment. Okay. I'll second it. Yeah, we can't ask any questions to the applicant. <clears throat> okay. All right. The motion's been made and seconded to close public comment. Any discussion? All those in favor? One, two, three, four, five. All right. Public comment's been closed. So, anybody have language around the EV um, parking stuff? Yeah, I think I, I think it's a very light lift to require just one conduit to support one charging station that is two spaces. Yep. Right. And I think that, you know, you, you just do it in the closest place to wherever the utility pole winds up. Yep. Because, you know, just wherever the shortest run is. Yep. But there's no better time to do that than when the whole area is getting torn up and under construction. 
Yeah, I was trying to look at the utility. They're going to stub it into the residential anyway, so that really just right. throw it in the same thing. Another, another trench somewhere, short trench. Okay, so that would be our third condition. Can't. Think of another. All right. I, so, Carolyn, is there? There's the possibility that this goes to conservation commission, and they say, "Absolutely not. You're in the. There's just too much going on in the buffer zone. You need to reduce this by two units or something." So at that point, it comes back to us. Um. Well. Under let's say the scenario is that they say it's too much. If you approve four and they say it's too much and they build two, it still meets. You mean your the approval still stands? Um, the we try not to set up any permit for failure. So the whole idea has been we've been shrinking what the existing footprint is away from the wetland and pulling the parking away from the existing gravel and very close to the wetland buffer it's still in the buffer for um and the parking lot is pulled back um from the existing gravel edge um and then the the wetland around the southeasterly side um will be the buffer will be planted where it's now gravel so um that is an improvement so again it goes to conservation commission they could say we want more plantings we need, want you to pull back further and so to, it depends on the extent of their changes so let's say they want the parking lot cut in half right. um you know that might trigger a planning board amendment um but again, it's less than what the board approved, so it may not. Well, I'm really excited about in putting it in the parking lot to access, you know, easy access for families to use this great space. You know, we still need to spend more 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 resources on parks and uh, areas for for people to use. So. We need to make it as easy as possible for them to do it from all four. Thanks, Sue. And I just want to emphasize to you when you all make the determination. So this is a special permit because it's a greater than a 40% reduction in frontage for this lot. So instead of just site plan for affordable housing, it's a special permit. And so you're looking at the special permit criteria that um ensuring that the that is still meeting the intent and the goals and objectives of the plans and the um, ordinances to provide this affordable housing even with that greater reduction in frontage and that's because it's coming off the end of cook avenue um, where there isn't um, frontage thank you yeah, and Chris, I understand your your comment about uh, the Conscom, and we've been through that at other hearings. And the timing always doesn't work out. It's nice when Conscom weighs in first on something right. like this, um, but and, and because unfortunately of the the scheduling that they're fucking up against, um, so we can only hope that they've done due diligence and the Conscom won't make drastic changes. But all right. I think all the criteria has been met for the special permit. Would like to make a motion. Uh, may I do so? Yeah. And I'd like, I move that we approve the project at 196 Cook Avenue in the rural residential um, with the three conditions. We just discussed. Very good. And just for the record, the conditions are around uh, submitting of a maintenance plan by the homeowners association at some point for the stormwater treatment, revised plans to go to the DPW before construction begins that really delineate 
and answer their comments. And the third one is about the EV stub for future EV stations. All right, motions been made. There second. Was second. Motion second. Any discussion? Okay, all in favor. All right. Thank you very much, Keith. Good luck with your parking lot and some. Uh, good luck with those not weed. It's not the only spot. I'm sorry, Jeff. Maybe we can get some volunteers in there too. It's a, it's a nasty invasive. We'll take a very short break. Uh, for a minute or two.
Well, good evening again. Uh, thanks for bearing with us. We are almost out of time for uh, special permit site plan amendments for a standard. Well, everybody, could we? At uh, two family by Roland Willett and Rebecca Allen at 332 Turkey Hill Road. Did we miss any comments? You doing okay over there? I might be getting some recon about how to get this going. <laughs> Oh, geez. Is there a uh, the Northampton Open Media. Well, good evening again. Thanks for bearing with us. We are almost on time for uh, a special permit site plan amendment for a stairs driveway layout with stormwater at uh, Two Family by Roland Willett and Rebecca Allen at 332 Turkey Hill Road, Florence. Map so by D thirty four thirty four. Is there a presentation? Perry Reynolds, we go with engineering here representing Roland and Rebecca. Um, and uh, basically, this was a project that was permitted um, back in 2007. And then here, uh, so that that got a special permit for the common driveway and uh, a special approval for the development. Uh, since then, uh, there was a follow-up uh, uh, there was a follow-up amendment following that um, where they developed the very bottom of this site. Uh, and they just reorganized, did a little better design and so on for the top of the apartment condominiums down at the bottom. So, uh, and you know, that was three, three buildings, three units per, per unit building. Um, so, what we're here now is to combine those efforts. There was the original permit, the follow up amended permit. Um, to bring it all together because the second amendment or amended permit didn't include the first amendment permit. Uh, so the current brings all three lots together. Um, and, and so that is what we're here to talk about today. Um, so Currently, this is the overall site. Uh, the overall site is 13 acres up on the hill. Um, of that original permit, a driveway was constructed that comes through Mineral Hills, which begins with the parking area of Mineral Hills, comes across what was uh, Lot 3, 320 Turkey Hill, and then comes up the hill to what is 332. So there was a, a stone, crushed stone driveway that was built, 16 feet wide plus of crushed stone coming up the hill. Do you want to pause for a little? Okay, okay. Sorry. Were, were those three units built or just the one that's shown? Just the, the one that's shown was built. But the three were permitted. The three were permitted and they're still valid, a valid permit. So what is being proposed is to amend that permit um, so that uh, basically it's a reduction uh, of the development. The, the current owner doesn't, doesn't want to build that much, um, so he wanted to reduce that a little bit, which allowed us to pull the development back We're texting the, the audio is out again for the Zoom people. And reduce the development impact okay. down there. Right. Um, so, so basically, Thanks. this is the site layout, so it went from three three-unit buildings to two three-units and a two-unit building. That allowed us to pull what was the stormwater basin um, next to the last building um, further away from the river front and straight in the driveway. So the driveway got hooked into the more into the river front before. Um, and that also uh, basically allows uh, for 
more more F ability for us to redo the driveway so it rains better, control the drainage, stabilize things better. Um, so, and did we did we approve that uh, additional um, entrance to the that lot from close to the parking area? So now there's an in and out. Right now there's only really one entrance to the lot. to the um, <coughs> condo. Yes. Yeah. Yes, there was a there was a connecting driveway that was approved originally on that. Um, that is generally where the dri current driveway is generally where it was. Um, it was it was sort of an emergency access. Um, we modified that a little bit just to ensure that um, our trucks can actually loop through there if needed. Um, but um, that will remain a gravel connection. It won't move. It won't be a primary connection for the parking sale. Uh, coming up the driveway, we come to the top, and now what is proposed is a is a lo very large two-family home at the top of the hill. That house um, will be solar powered, use geothermal. Recording in progress. And, uh, and um, it. it uh, Will also include a, a, its own uh, stormwater management system for the water quality going on coming off the roof areas and the, and the lawn areas and pieces of the house. Um, this uh, has received a stormwater permit, an amended stormwater permit. It had an original stormwater permit from 2007. Uh, the amended stormwater permit accounts for the development of the top. There's a rain garden up here. Uh, there is a also a diversion level spreader on this side of the site. Uh, the entire site is being had it was logged recently, uh, eight years ago. Uh, so it's being revegetated. Re we have an extensive planting plan done by Regenerative Design Group. They will be overseeing all the plantings. Uh, that are occurring on the site and during construction, managing the vegetation uh, up and down the driveway um, also. Uh, and one piece I'm skipping over and uh, now is as part of the original um, permitting, there was a, a driveway easement across what is the current um, conservation area and uh, that that area that area is right here and by utilizing the driveway access that they had that would have, have compromised the current parking that's for mineral hills uh, there is no designated parking in Mineral Hill. People kind of park all over in there. Uh, and oftentimes people get blocked in. Um, so it becomes problematic. So as part of this project, uh, the applicants have, have offered to build that parking area for the conservation area. Um, so what's proposed are eight parking spaces down there associated stormwater management that goes with them um, and then the stormwater man that and then stormwater management for the apartments <coughs> below um, and uh, this uh, was approved by conservation earlier tonight um, and so uh, I guess I'll move on and see if I can show you some elevations Easement two and three. Uh, I'm not sure what you're talking about. Where where are you looking? I gotta get back to it. Hang on. There are, there, there's a driveway easement 
that easement two is for the driveway, easement three is for the driveway. So the easement two is the portion of driveway that is on the 320 lot. Easement three is the portion of the driveway that's on the city property. Oh, okay, so there's two different lots here. Yeah, the lot the lot line is basically the left edge of that easement two. And coming up and then it comes the city property is a little nose that sticks into 320. Um, so the hatching you see at the very top, that's city property. And there's a couple of easements in there. There's there's a stormwater easement. There, there's a drainage easement, and there's also a septic easement in there so that that owner can build septic and manage the stormwater. Did you talk about the easement? I see that you're bringing the underground electric right past the condos over to the driveway to go up the hill. Yes. And that requires there, there is an existing electric easement that was done back in 2007. That easement will be modified um, due to the basin. Uh, that easement was very, very rough. There was no, that first plan I showed you was basically almost a napkin plan. That easement was based off of that. Um, so where the the contractors right now are working with the electric company to develop a new easement that will bring that up to the top of the truck to the house um so let's see if i can get this other one come up. so <clears throat> Uh, that is a proposed septic field out there. I don't have those designs, um, but they're 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 over fifty feet away from that basin there. Yeah. Very top of the oh, at the top of the hill. The top of the hill, the, the septic system, I'm sorry, I did design that. Um, <laughs> I thought you were talking about the ones at the bottom. Um, that is 10 feet away from the rain garden. I'm just curious, well, I'm just curious what the, what's the bottom elevation of, of the leach field? The, the bottom elevation of the leach field is um, it's two and a half feet below the surface. Um, there is an impervious barrier between the leach field and that, and that, and the rain garden. Uh, there's not a possibility for to have lateral or horizontal effluent going into it. Um, and it, and the rain garden is not an, really an infiltrating rain garden. It has a sub drain. Um, that that will release. Hello. So this is just an overall of the house that's proposed. Um, the house being proposed is fourteen thousand square feet of living of interior space. Um, um, basically, these are the elevations, the garage on the easterly side. Um, this is the south with a wing right here. Um, these are more, more views looking from the north, to the south. That's the main entrance there. Um, and then this is looking easterly. So, or yeah, looking easterly. Um, that's uh, the pool area in here uh, above. Uh, this is gonna be a, uh, a, a green garden, green roof right here. Um, and then this is the left-hand side of that. And with the wing right here. Um, 
this is our west elevation looking the other way. Uh, and again, this is looking through the bank into what would be the garage. Um, and then to where it, oh no, in the south. <laughs> so. And that is a two family. It's a two family, yes. That's that's our two family permit. And that's that's more so so they can um, get the separation for the solar credit on it. For solar credits. Otherwise, it, they'd all live in the same house. No matter. Um, so talk to us a little bit about the driveway where there going to be some pullouts added to the driveway. There were original pullouts proposed and approved. Those are there. Those are going to continue to be there. And additionally, there's going to be reinforced sections for passing and potential parking if needed. But it'll all, the, all the shoulder areas are going to be vegetated um, with, a, with the grass mix um, and uh, it's really not a shared driveway once you get past the lower. It's not a shared driveway once you pass the parking lot. Yeah. Um, and there's no lighting for both for that lot. driveway? No. No, not currently. Um, if there is, it's going to be you know, just low level driveway poles. What about the lighting up around the house itself? Nothing, nothing other than just basically wall sconce type things. I can imagine a very high spot. Yeah, it's 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 very screened. The only the only place you can see the house will be up on, if you hike up on top of Mineral Hill. Um, but um. Yeah, it purposely the clearing was done selectively to keep it well screened from my rear. Other questions from the board? Before we open up for public comment. All right. Well, at this time, why don't we uh, thank you very much for the presentation? Don't go too far away. All right. Um, is there anyone in the public who would like to speak to this application? Or I'm Nicole Nakashin on Turkey Hill Road. Um, obviously, this is a pretty massive. Nicole, yeah, sorry, what number Turkey 296 so Turkey Hill, close to the... right underneath it. Okay. Yeah. Um, so it's obviously a, a massive scale of a project. So it would be helpful to understand the water runoff and how that'll be controlled beyond the driveway. But just for those houses like mine that are pretty much directly underneath and it's a pretty steep slope to understand how, you know, once this is built, the the runoff will be controlled in terms of erosion, flooding, that type of thing. So are you um, speaking in relation to the two new units on the lower end as opposed to the, the one up high? Uh, mostly concerned about the one up high, but I'm assuming, you know, all of the construction is going to affect the way the water runs down the hill. Thanks. Thanks. Would you like to speak sure. to that driveway runoff? Absolutely. Yeah, so so we've done a full analysis of of the site in, in developing the stormwater system for this. Um, so basically we've maintained the general drainage patterns overall for for the area. Um, And I am gathering that uh I can get this come down. Oops. You're down here somewhere. Yeah, uh, like we're like directly below it. Right, right in this area somewhere. Yeah, yeah. 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 So um basically the house, the the majority of the runoff from the house is going this way. It's going north northwest really uh, a small amount is coming down this way the amount that's actually coming down to your lots is very small um there's a level spreader here um, which is just collecting the driveway area the roof 
and all these surrounding areas here are all being going down the driveway and going overland towards towards the brook. Um, so very little is actually coming down directly down the hill to Turkey Hill. But, what about the new construction down below? Those those are designed to go to that basin by the driveway. Right now, it's it's kind of flat. He's got a he's got a basin on 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 Turkey Hill that collects that area. But when he finish when that area gets done, that water is all going to go to the west and into that basin. Currently, I think there's a large berm in front of uh, on that front. There's a long turkey hill at the end that's wooded. Um, there's quite a bit of trees. There are quite a buffer there between your property and that other barn. Other comments? Carolyn, what about our friends out in Greenville? Um. I don't know if chat about this project. We had a little glitch when we transferred when we got the screen back on and there was no audio. So I think we got that all corrected, but um, there's nothing about there's nothing about this project. Good. Thank you. Other questions from the board for the applicant? Public comment. Can I just um I yeah. want to address some EPW um, comments. So these came in today. I didn't get a chance to review them. Um, I just wanted to let you know that um, they made comments about the grade, the driveway grades. Um, I'm not sure if Terry Reynolds spoke to this, but this driveway was permitted before the standards changed. We wouldn't allow this steep grade today because of emergency access. Um, so they made a comment of that, I think, not realizing this driver was permitted and built before that. So um, there, um, they recommend, so they're making a recommendation that the end of Turkey Hill Road to the proposed driveway be paved. Um, I don't, I don't know that's in the planning board's jurisdiction. Um, because, um, so what happens is Turkey Hill Road ends and become, I mean, it doesn't end, it stops being paved and then there's gravel, um, and then this will be a paved driveway into the gravel section. So they're sort of, um, concerned about that interface. They're not required to pave the driveway. Um, uh, the property owner is not required to pave the driveway. So, um, that's in our comments. I just wanted to highlight that. Um, there is a recommendation they're making to the applicant, um, but of course that would be in the right of way. It would require public, um, you know, uh, meeting uh, labor standards and all that stuff. Um, so, so just an also an FYI, um, they know this. They're working on a septic system. Um, they will need to, because it's an amendment to their stormwater plans, um, they want to see um, the final plans um, submitted um, before permits are pulled that include um, stormwater agreements and final cleanup of the plans. And that's basically it. Um, they noted that water distribution is not properly shown. So that would be the first thing to Water. These are just, at, these are just sort of or, or flagging yeah. um, yeah. notes, <clears throat> conditions of the plane. Water distribution? It's not city water up there. Right. <laughs> what is water distribution? Just. Um, it's an one in the form. I'm not sure. It's okay. All right. It, sort of heads up problem. Okay. You got that? Hey, somewhat similar question is the original planning board decision that I can't find it now, or it's not so much, but um, had a number of conditions, like one of which was reporting the stormwater maintenance plans, 
another one was the grading of the, you know, of the another one was that it had to be sprinkled. Yes. So uh, my question is all of those, do they, all of those still remain intact? Yes. They still remain. So what's am being amended is the layout and there's an amendment to the stormwater um, management. So that will have to be re-recorded um, okay. for the maintenance obligations. And there's a, and as um, uh, Terry mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, so originally it was three lots, it was going to be three building lots, and the city acquired one of them. So there's been an adjustment. The city is not going to participate in a maintenance plan with two other residential lots. So um, that would need to be addressed too. There's no longer the hammerhead at the end of the street because it's not this end of the street was discontinued, so it's not the same layout. So there's some things that go away mm -hmm. because of the, what happened uh, with the transfer of the property, but the ones about the sprinkler system, absolutely, um, fire department's already, um, and, and, I, and the codes have changed too. So I think even if that condition weren't in there, um, it's my understanding the codes were fired in. So we're 14,000 square feet, so yeah. Can I speak real quick to that? One of the yeah, conditions I was, believe was um, a dry well or something up top. We can't do that. It's not feasible. That's why we've got the rain garden. The, the ground up there isn't suitable for infiltration that way. I just want to make sure we're, that's a condition that needs to get changed. That was on the original? Yes. Um, I believe so. And I did have one other question. I know we we started to close the hearing, but um, on um, it just about the the tree planting on one of your sheets seven of fourteen. It talks about um, you know how much you removed. Three hundred forty eight inches of trees were removed, and um, you're you're showing a portion of that on your drawings, right. and it says. Uh, additional replacement required of 64 inches that I assume is not shown on these drawings yet. Right. And so that'll be contributed to the fund. Oh, okay. Yeah. So does that need to be a, a condition of our approval that we... Right. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. So it's 64 inches. And then, Terry, is there... I assume there's a well for this property? And is that shown on these plans? That is shown on the plans. Um, that is shown. Uh, well, is right here. Um, hard to see right here if I can try and zoom it in. Oh, I see. Proposed well location. Okay. Sorry. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And then, um, so is there like a, a water storage tank for the sprinkler system? Is that how that gets addressed? That hasn't been developed yet. They think it's going to be in the building. Okay. Um, it, it's evidently going to be a lot smaller than I thought. Oh, that's good. But um, they're, they're either going to do that or do a dry system. Okay. Hmm. So. Great. Um, Other questions for the applicant, board members? No? So at this point, we have uh, some conditions. Thanks for bringing up the ones from many years ago, a different planning board, um, but those are still in effect. One you, member was the same. You noted that uh, <laughs> you noted that one condition needs to be amended, I guess. Um, I don't know how that happens legally. Well, the dry just well. in this amendment, you could say the dry the dry wells um, will no longer be provided, or something, like or rain garden in lieu of dry well, that kind of thing. They have not invented rain gardens. Kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, the parking lot that the applicants, the the homeowners, are building for the city, more or less, that I'm, I'm sure has to be some kind of specifications for the city in terms of layout, or is it something that they just do with their private contractor? Um, how does that get evaluated? Or so we worked on this before the applicant submitted. It's um, 
you know, it's smaller, it's, um, it's just sort of parking to the edge of that driveway. Um, we've worked out the details. They have to, um, there's not a standard for this size lot. Um, and so we've sort of gone through and figured this, it was to me sort of driveway surface, but for additional cars, okay. essentially. Okay. It's like a parking pad at a resident, you know. Okay. All right. Um, so I'm trying to think, I'm trying to refresh our minds about the conditions here. Um, uh, once all the stormwater has been clarified with the DPW, a uh, new stormwater maintenance plan has to be submitted, I believe, by the association. Is that what I heard? There's individual ones for each lot. For each lot. Okay. Um, we're we're passing on that question from the DPW about the interface between the end of the gravel road and the paved driveway. Uh, Turkey it's Hill not becomes a gravel. They're making right. a recommendation. Okay. Um, right. I don't think the city has a jurisdiction to require them to okay. pave the end of the road. Right. We're not asking them to put in a sidewalk at this point. Nope. Um, they, there is traffic mitigation required from the original. Uh, traffic mitigation in lieu of um, something like you know building a sidewalk down to here. Yeah, we have to restate that if it was in the original permit. Okay, um, the applicant is going to contribute to the tree fund uh, an amount of money for 64 additional inches of tree replacement? So yeah, that would be um, prior to certificate of occupancy, yep. we check to make sure that has been done. Right. And uh, final plans need to be submitted to the DPW? To our Noted office. To your DPW. office, okay. Compliance with the utility or you know, plan standards. This one. Great. Okay. Um, I'm just stating for the record that there's no lights projected for the long driveway and there's no extraneous lighting of pickle courts or tennis courts up on top of this hill. Yeah. Um, the only residential lighting. There, there may be there may be just safety pole lighting going up the driveway. So like any like a residential. Okay, so I, I'm somewhat concerned because of the, 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 the location of this very large house. Um, we don't have any zoning about kind of ridge top development, but this is certainly one of the highest spots in Northampton and a house of this magnitude, much as you say, it's not gonna be seen um, by others. I think it, it really, it doesn't set a precedent, but it 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 it, it opens up a lot of other uh, landscapes, view sets. Let me say, um, which I just personally aren't crazy aren't crazy about. But um, so yeah, we want to make sure that lighting is restricted at, as as much as possible. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, it's not a problem to have down but in a you know downtown lighting. Well, that's our lighting standards pretty right. much now. So yeah, yeah. Yep. Can you just clarify? You said pole lighting. Um, what height of poles? What you might put along the garden. Yeah. I think you'd want to see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think we really want. That's a lot of poles up that length of a driveway. Um, Would you want to see uh, just a? Condition it on, on the lighting standard. Sure, sure. That can be. I would recommend that um, that if there are any lights on post lights that are proposed, that um, that be an amendment, not a staff review. Okay, because it is pretty unusual for that length of a driveway, and especially at that height. And where it's where, where it's located. Um, I think you'd want to look at the number, the distribution. Yeah. 
the light output. Okay. Great. Okay. So they already paid into the traffic mitigation back at their first certificate of compliance. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. I think we've. I don't know if we've missed anything. The the comments from the abutters. Um, I think we addressed with the stormwater, um, as proposed, the stormwater management system. Okay. There are no, is there, I think we started talking about closing the public hearing. We could discuss that again. I second. Most has been made and seconded to close the public hearing. Any discussion? I don't know All right. Thanks. All right. All those in favor? Okay. Um, so now we can't ask the applicant any more questions, uh, no more comments. Anything else we need to discuss? No. Nope. I'll, I'll move to approve the um, special permit major site plan amendment, shared driveway layout, stormwater uh, for the two family home at 332 Turkey Hill Road in Florence per the list of conditions that George has just reviewed with everyone. Right. I can go over the demo, Carol. I second. Motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion? Yeah. Nope. Hearing none. All those in favor? All right. Thank you very much. That was a big jump from four affordable housing units to this one, huh? No, I think it's the precedent that I worry about is that you can build as big a two family home as you want as long as you bury it in the woods and nobody yeah. can see it right. and nobody would come and complain. And this yeah. isn't too big, but it's about 90 million square feet. Is. And I get that the lots are very different, locations very different. And I just, I hate that that's yeah. nobody comes to complain about this. There yeah. were some comments. Right, I don't understand what that has to do with our zoning regulations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right, is it? No, well, it is and it is. We're planners, do we want our city to become on a page of soil and all that sort of thing? Look, they have every right to build yeah. a structure, and I'm yeah. not, I'm actually not complaining about it. I'm complaining about the fact that other people, if you're going to come and complain about the 19 right. come and complain about the board. Right, right, right. right. Going to hold off on this before it's entered into the public record. So we are now about to yet open up yet one more major site plan of a 30 unit, six story building by Valley CDC. At 27 Craft Avenue, Map IC 31G2. Yep, I have it up on the. Uh, I don't know, did you want to screen share it in the chambers or? Yeah, you screen share that and then it'll pop up soon and also on. I see. We were talking about 109 room hotel. We heard last time we had a Okay. Good evening, commissioners. This is uh, Bill Wilmerf with Valley CDC. Uh, Valley CDC is a longstanding developer here in Northampton, building successful affordable housing. I'm joined here with Laura Baker and our team, uh, JWA, uh, Jill, who will be speaking later, and then Taylor, our site designer. Uh, this is the site, it's actually right behind me. Uh, it's the, if folks are familiar with the staircase. Uh, this site is one of the sites that um, was identified by the city, uh, and it's particularly interesting that it, it is uh, right here in downtown, so it makes for excellent walkability, uh, and including the regional and local bus station nearby. Here's a zoom in of the parcel, uh, highlighted in yellow for folks who can see it. Uh, it is carved off between 
the upper lot and a little bit of the lower lot next to the annex. Uh, this was a, uh, a disposition from city council uh, that was approved for uh, proposals for developers. Uh, Valley CDC was successfully awarded this development. Uh, it comes with certain uh, restrictions. Uh, those restrictions are that majority of the housing uh, proposed here needs to be for folks who are currently unhoused or extremely low income. Uh, and additionally, uh, that it has to be designed to passive house standards, which is one of the most rigorous uh, energy efficiency standards, uh, and it may not use fossil fuels. Uh, if it's not developed in five years, it reverts back to the city. So who will be living here in the 30 proposed apartments at Crafts Ave? Uh, they will all be studio apartments uh, for individuals, with the majority of those being uh, about 20 for folks who are currently unhoused or have extremely low income of less than $20,000 per year. Uh, the remaining 10 units will be for low or moderate income tenants who are making less than 42,000 per year or someone who is a minimum wage earner. Uh, on the ground floor, we will have on-site property management in addition to resident service coordinators who will be there to assist in the management of the property. Uh, in leading up to the planning board hearing tonight, uh, we have uh, met with the Downtown Northampton Association and have met with the Historic Northampton, uh, rather the Historic uh, Commission uh, here at the city uh, to review the plans informally uh, as it relates to the Historic District. Uh, we've identified a variety of benefits this project will have for the city. Uh, one of the ones I did want to note is that the uh, the staircase on the parcel is uh, planned to be removed in the coming years as a part uh, not include not a part of this particular project. Uh, so this building is a solution to the retaining wall that would be needing to be erected by the city. Uh, so, in addition to that, it provides must needed housing. Uh, I will turn it over to Taylor, uh, our site designer, to discuss the site plan. Hello. So, I think Bill did a pretty good job orienting everybody where the site is. Um, so, Crafts Ave is there on the eastern side. We have the employee uh, municipal parking lot, which is right behind us here, and then Roundhouse Plaza. Crafts Ave is the one-way street coming down, and then Roundhouse Plaza is the one-way coming to the east. So, so the site is pretty tight, and essentially the site is the building here. Um, some of the things I want to point out, the front entry is down on the southeastern side. It's kind of on the corner of Roundhouse Plaza and Crafts Avenue, and what we're trying to do is engage Crafts Avenue from a pedestrian standpoint there. There's going to be a bulb out in the sidewalk proposed. We're actually proposing to add a new crosswalk with accessible ramps on the other side of Crafts Avenue. Um, the other entrance is up on the other, the story and a half level walkout. We'll be off the parking lot at the top. Um, down in the lower left-hand corner of the page, there is gonna be emergency pullover for first responders since Roundhouse Plaza is kind of tight in one way. Um, the park, the angle parking along Crafts Avenue is going to remain and there'll be no reduction in spaces there. They are gonna be slightly realigned. Um, the EV charger that's currently there is gonna get moved up the street. A couple of minor things, the fire hydrant, uh, is going to get moved to the roundhouse plaza side there's going to be some uh, new trees in the front and some landscaping um, the alleyway in between the annex building the fire escape is going to be maintained there uh, there's going to be two entrances down in that alley uh, and then the bike storage is going to be maintained inside the building sorry there's going to be two entrances to this new building down in the alley Next to each other before entrances all together. Yeah. Yep. And those will be the ones in the alley will be smaller man doors, I believe. I don't want to misspeak. Um, and then just quickly going over the utilities plan uh, up on Crafts Avenue. 
kind of page northeast there. We're going to be making the water connections to the existing water line that comes down the street. Um, in the southeast, we're connect, proposing to connect to the sewer manhole in the and kind of in the intersection of Roundhouse and Crafts Avenue. Um, we're looking to move some of the stormwater from the um, municipal parking lot down and catching that and sending it down to the municipal system. Whereas currently there is a catch basin in that parking lot that daylights onto that slope um, to the north there. Uh, and we're looking to alleviate that. Um, yeah. And I think that's a quick run through of the site here. Um, turn it over to Jill to talk about the building. Okay. We're tag teaming it, but I'm last, so don't worry, we'll <laughs> wrap it up. Um, I'm gonna just walk through uh, massing and elevations. So we all know the context. Um, this diagram is illustrating the development of the design um, in terms of massing and how the facade came to be. This was largely shaped by the form-based code where on the central business district side street is the zone. Um, so what you can see in that top right corner is uh, the setback, the required setback at 50 feet. We uh, took that requirement, we were a little bit more generous, we wrapped it around the corner, and then that's going to be a tenant space, it's a, a, a roof deck for the tenants. Um, based on that uh, cutout, we uh, took a, an approach to the massing where we are looking at the building as two parts of a single whole. So that part where the cutout is, we're seeing as kind of the separate um, as a four-story building facing the south, adjacent to a six-story building to the north that is uh, one and a half stories under grade on that north side. So with that idea of the two parts, uh, you can see we've uh, developed that further when you start looking at the horizontal banding. So treating the masses as two separate entities together. Um, and then uh, just the form-based code has lots of guidelines on windows and glazing and the overall form. We're trying to maintain a vertical emphasis on the, on the building, um, symmetrical form. We're within the historic district, so we're also working on being compatible with the historic context. So kind of how we get to where we ended up, which is here. So this is the view looking up Crafts Avenue from the south. So here you see the um, four-story mass in the front. This door here is the primary entrance to the building on the corner at the chamfered corner there. Um, and then you can see there's a fair amount of glazing at the first store, first level on the south side. There are no residential units on the ground floor, they're on the upper floors. So that ground floor is shared tenant space and then mechanical space and storage is what's under underground in the back. So here, just highlighting a few of the design elements. In terms of materials, we're looking at brick um, and then a secondary cladding material could be metal panel, maybe fiber cement, but something with a vertical texture to it. So looking at using um, the two different materials to create that interest and depth on the facade and to not have blank, blank areas. Um, also using the change in materials to help group the windows and maintain that um, rhythm across the facade. This is a view looking down Crafts Avenue from the north. I did want to highlight that we have revised the north elevation since our initial submission. We had gotten some um, input from various parties, and uh, we feel that this is doing a little bit of a better job of breaking up the facade, keeping that symmetrical um, patterning that wraps around the building. And previously, we had had just a, more of a blank area, so we're spacing that out a little bit more along the north now. This is the view from the parking lot, the City Hall parking lot, uh, again from the north. You can see that second entrance there on the right side of the building. Um, that would be primarily an egress for tenants. So primary entrance is at the front on the corner. This is the secondary egress off the second stair. Those two doors in the um, that alleyway, one is serving bike storage and one is just an emergency egress from a stair. They're not main in in ways. 
And then finally, this is the view from Main Street looking down Crafts Avenue to give you a sense of the scale and how the building fits into the surrounding context. Okay, so we'll open it up for questions for any of us. What is the height of that building? In Hold on one sec, sir. W wait one sec. Um, would If you want to make a comment, we'll open it up and you can come up to the podium and give us your name and address, okay? Sure. And address address your questions to the yeah, board. Yeah, and I'm familiar. My name is Bob Walker. I live at 13 Fort Street, North Hampton. I just want to acknowledge I'm also a member of the Central Business Architectural Great. Committee. Uh, I'd like to know what the height is in relationship, the height of the roof in relationship to the city hall. Yeah. So the city hall is going to be roughly the roof portion is about three feet taller than our building. And then the towers are, I think, 13. They're over 10 feet taller. Taller so than do, city hall. The towers are taller than our building. Yeah, the top tower on that. On city oh, hall. the city hall city towers. Hall. City yeah. hall. What's the relationship of the mass of the city hall roof to that of your building? So, Mr. Walker. I don't want to Mr. Walker, sorry, but we have this little protocol where you address your questions to the board sorry. rather than to give well, and take with you. There. I know. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. So ask us what is your question? Specifically, the height of the new building compared to the roof edge of City Hall, not the towers. I heard it's three feet lower than City yeah, Hall. So that's, that's what I just heard her okay. say. Fine. Um, what do you anticipate? Uh, how long a construction schedule would take to put together this building? Uh, do you want me to answer here? Or you want me to? Uh, yeah. Again, we'll take your question here, and then when we get a number of questions, we'll approach the applicant with them. Okay. Um, so your question is about the construction schedule. Yes. Yeah, so thank that's you very much. Practical. Okay. All right. What, the, what you think the length of the construction schedule would be? Okay. Good. A any other questions that you have for the applicant? Many. Did did you um, preface your statement by saying you're a member of the Central Business Architecture? Okay. And did the applicant meet with you? Not yet. Not yet. Okay, so you're kind of pre. There's no meeting, but it's like no, we're not in that because it's outside of the. Central I see. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Good. So you have many questions for the applicant. Not many, but I have a few. Yeah. Okay. All right. So one is about the, the length of the construction period. Yeah. And what other questions do you have? Well, my concerns are uh, it's an extremely tight site. Mm -hmm. And to develop that site, I think there's going to be a big effect on Crafts Avenue. I assume that the municipal lot that's right out here will probably not be available during the construction period because you'll need it for site work to develop the site work. Um, I don't know when this project is planning on being built. I know I heard there's a five-year period that they had to do this. A big concern I have is along with the construction of the down the Main Street downtown and this construction, I feel like our city is going to become this very large construction site that's going to be very detrimental to the business in our town. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, those are my concerns. Um, and personally, and I'll be happy, since it's not going to be reviewed in the Central Business Architecture Committee, I personally feel the massing of the building is too big in that site. And I think it's going to stick up too high. I think it'll be detrimental to the feeling of our municipal center, like the City Hall. Okay. Great. Great. Right. Thank you very much. Thanks. Okay, so if you'll sit down, we're going to take all the comments and then we'll address them to the applicant. Okay. If there's anybody else, is there anyone else from the audience who'd like to make a comment either in favor or? Hi, my name is Bill Breitbart. I live at 37 Monroe Street in Northampton. <clears throat> and uh, I'm, I am a member of the Valley CDC Real Estate Committee. Um, I, uh, and retired from a 40 year career in affordable housing development and uh, administration. Um, I was director of the nonprofit, which is now known as Wayfinders. I was the partner in a uh, development consulting firm that provides services to nonprofit housing, uh, housing developers. And I was the Western and Central Mass Executive Director of uh, CDAC, which is the 
state housing finance agency that provides financing and technical assistance to uh, nonprofits that are developing affordable housing. So in that, I just give that for context because I have, as a result of these roles, uh, either participated in or reviewed uh, many, probably hundreds of uh, affordable housing projects, many of which are uh, projects that serve homeless and low-income tenants in um, center city areas. Um, and I really do think that this project is ideally suited to both serve that population and, to, uh, and the needs of that population and to enhance and benefit downtown, both by the nature of the buildings themselves and the services and quality housing that will be provided to the people who live, who, who are in downtown now and in the community who need this kind of housing. Um, I think that the main issue, one of the main issues, I won't, I won't go into the need in any great detail, but I think, because I think that's been, that I think we probably all agree on that. But um, I do think that one of the big issues that I've seen in reviewing projects of this kind is the capacity and quality of the developer. And um, I know from experience that we are very fortunate to have Valley CDC uh, to develop these kinds of projects in this community and the communities in this area. They have uh, a first rate recommend, uh, reputation throughout the state. Um, and that reputation goes to both the ability to manage the complicated development process, including the assembling of financing and going through the, the whole process of development, as well as um, overseeing the management and the service provision in these types of projects, which are absolutely critical, and the long-term maintenance um, of the properties uh, through the perspective of asset management. Um, I think that this property is, is very well located in terms of the people that it's designed to serve um, and uh, fills an unused space in the community, uh, creating a, a streetscape, which I think would be a substantial benefit to the, to the community. Um, and uh, as was mentioned, uh, it also has to meet all the requirements, both of the city and of the state for energy conservation. Uh, we've come a long way in the development of those interests since I started doing this work. And I think this property clearly reflects that. So um, for all that's worth, I would hope that the planning board would approve the project. Thank you. Other questions from those here? Yep. I'm Jana Ugoni, and I live at 35 Norfolk Avenue in Northampton. And I love the project of Safer's, you know, right off the bat. It's beautiful. Just from an aesthetic point of view, uh, one comment. My, my um, <laughs> roommate in college was an architect, and she used the word piggy a lot. So I almost <laughs> want to say it. It looks like it's hogging a lot of the space in that footprint. Uh, personally, I would love to see the whole top layer gone and have a whole green garden up there. I think you could see it from Main Street. It would act like a very progressive, interesting building and contribution to the town because uh, there aren't a lot of trees in that section there. And it would be a little bit more um, progressive looking for one way. Of is my point of view. But the other, the only other thing is, you know, I've been in this town since 1979 and seen it through a lot of changes. That is a very congested area. And I, I do appreciate that they're going to move some of those, some of the charging stations to another street. So it won't have that going on there. When you looked at, I liked the down, um, the the um, top view, so it showed that little half round, and I love the softening of the building in that corner. But it seems to me like it should be moved off of that main area. It's very congested there. It's a single lane street. When even one person backs out, backs out from that lower area, it 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 backs it all the way up to, you know, all the way up the street. So it just seems like it's. Um, a lot of action right there, adding to an already congested spot. 
that's my only input there. I'm thrilled that we're building this kind of project here in Northampton and thank you. It's a really great project. That's enough. Thank you. Anyone else in the room who'd like to speak before we go out to uh, the chat? Can I just make one additional comment? Sure. First of all, I, I wanted to say that I'm very much into affordable housing and I know that Northampton needs it. So I'm not here. To, and it has nothing to do with the opposition of affordable housing. I'm commenting strictly on an architectural and planning point of view. Great. And I agree with the woman who spoke and I mentioned massing. And to me, and this is strictly aesthetics and everyone's aesthetics is personal. I understand mm -hmm. that. But I agree that the top two stories that I just look like they're added on to try to maximize the volume of the space. And I don't think they complement the architecture of the building. I would be very happy with that building if it was four stories with, with, with the, the way it shows there. So I just wanted to add that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So why don't we turn to our chat facilitator? Um, Kathy says, I agree with the green area on the roof. Could you speak up? Says, hello, Carolyn, I have a comment on this. I am extremely happy to see how this project is unfolding. The design is brilliant and it will fill an empty space downtown. I echo that gentleman just said and also want to add that I love that the income is at different levels for people to grow and I would support a rooftop garden or trees such as fruit trees that are fixing carbon. I fully support this labor of love or worthwhile investment and that is all the chat comments. Carolyn, just the, the first one again, Can you, if you can go back there. I, Kathy, I agree with the green roof area. Okay. All right. Yep. All right. Um, so planning board, we heard about how tight the site is, um, the, the concern about the construction schedule, schedule, which we'll try to get a take on. Um, the idea of the massing for that part of town. Other questions that you have for the applicant? There's no parking at all. No, and the zoning doesn't call for any parking for. I get it. It just seems yeah. like low income. The whole idea is to not be low income forever. So you have to have a car in this area to get a job. I don't get it. Well, but other, Sam, other people live downtown and they use the auxiliary lots behind the brewery or behind the roundhouse. Yeah. They get long. Yeah, you have to pay for it. It's long term. Okay. I mean, yeah, um, isn't it not? It just doesn't seem like a. I don't, I don't get it. But huh. it's, I just don't see how you get to a job. You know, I employ people who can't get to a job. Yeah. But we're not. But we're not saying they can't have cars. They're just saying you yeah. can't. No, we're just saying you can't park right there on this, you know. But there isn't. Perfect. Well, so yeah. the zoning doesn't require for any residential I use. Totally it doesn't matter whether it's affordable housing or market rate housing. Okay, I I understand that, and I just yeah. okay. Matter. All right, thanks. It looks like the applicant had something to say about that. You want to address that question? I would love to address that now or later. Okay, why don't you hold it for a little bit? Okay. Um. Other questions about the site? You know, we usually have some basic ones for the applicant, like how are you handling trash and recycling for a large, a large unit like this? There doesn't seem to be a lot of extra space here. Yeah, I guess I can say that. Um, um, no, hold on a sec. Yeah, hold on one sec. So I guess I'll ask that to the applicant. I have answers for those questions. You, you do, okay. Could you? Yes, of course. Thank you. Just waiting for it. Yep. I know there's so many of you. I'm not sure who to ask to come up to the podium. 
Yeah, so I'm Bill. I'm the uh, real estate project manager with Valley CDC. Uh, I'm happy to answer these questions. So I first wanted to answer the schedule question. Uh, so the schedule is right now slated for about 13 to 15 months uh, to start at the absolute earliest in late 2025, uh, more likely than not uh, into 2026. Um, so we aren't sure yet if it's gonna coincide with the Main Street redesign uh, or if it's gonna be lingering afterwards, but I think it'll be something we'll know and can address as it, as it approaches. Uh, on the subject of the difficulty of the site, uh, we have put extra attention from the site design perspective into the type of shoring method. Uh, we're going to be doing uh, more likely than not a type of shoring method that isn't as invasive. So one of the plans actually shows a, a, a dash line around the site that will be our, our limit of impact, uh, which will allow that craft sab will stay uh, maintained for uh, at least as much as we can, uh, with except for maybe sporadic uh, disc, uh, continuation of it uh, for only a day or two at a time. Uh, as uh, on the massing side, I, I did want to speak on that. Uh, right now, this the zoning uh, allows this massing as of right, including the height and everything about the characteristics of the building uh, due to the form-based code. Uh, we have put special attention into the design of the building, uh, particularly on the way it has two separate uh, types and kind of staggers up the hill. Uh, that way it looks at any point kind of like a four-story building uh, next to uh, about a four and a half story building. Uh, I believe if you're standing up or walking around the site, you actually won't see uh, most of the top story, uh, particularly as to how the cornice kind of bumps out on the, uh, I think it's the fourth floor height. Uh, it actually kind of really sheds the, the mass of it and I think breaks it down into a more uh, welcoming uh, way into the historic characteristic of the district. Um, the site is really an ideal location too from a transportation perspective. I'll let Laura talk about our existing portfolio, uh, but uh, the site itself, it really lends itself to what's called mixed uh, mo modality, uh, allowing for the residents of the building to either bike to uh, a nearby uh, store that they may work at, uh, to walk uh, to pretty much most of Main Street uh, in a quick distance, but also take local and regional bus transportation. Uh, one quick response on the dumpster though. Uh, we will be uh, sharing uh, the dumpster with the annex building, uh, the building we're in here. There's a uh, uh, dumpster facility that will be upgraded, I believe from a four yard to a, I wanna say six or eight yard, uh, depending on the use and will be regularly monitored by the management company to ensure it's adequate. Thank you. Where's that location? Uh, it's located, um, I could probably point to it, <laughs> probably right below this window here. Uh, it's near um, it's kind of this entrance in for the lot. So you, you have an agreement with the city to share that? Uh, that with the uh, central services is the uh, right. Uh, did I miss any particular other questions? So far, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. So the dumpsters are existing. Yeah. Um, and we are provisioning for 30 uh, indoor uh, bike spaces. So one Great of the things, <laughs> one of the things, one of the things that we love about the location, most of our folks at this income level will not be able to afford to have a car. Not everybody, but most of them. And so that is our priority for how many bus stops are nearby, train station, bike trail, and just general walkability. This is a this will be a very coveted place to live. Lots of people want to live in downtown Northampton and they can't afford to do it because it's very expensive. Um, one of the issues that was raised, there's the roundhouse um, has long-term parking, the parking garage has long-term parking. They're both super close to this location. But if you're very low income, maybe you can't afford to pay for that parking. So um, a couple of things, we'll look at subsidies for people who need to pay for long-term parking. If you have a handicap um, placard, you can park in any city parking lot for free. 
indefinitely. So those folks who might need a vehicle because they have mobility issues will be covered. And we also own another property that's about a five minute walk from here where we have surplus parking. So that's another way for somebody who maybe uses their car occasionally, doesn't want to give it up. We could give them a space there. And again, it's it's a five minute walk from where this building is. So I agree with you that it's not just, oh, zoning doesn't require it. We don't have it. Um, I do think we'll be able to accommodate the what we think will be the minority of tenants who have a have a vehicle. I'd like to hear a little bit more about pedestrian flow around the building on the Crafts Ave level. You mentioned briefly a crosswalk. I'd love to hear a little bit more about where that's going to be located, sidewalks. I mean, it is just such a tight site you're kind of coming around a curve there are cars there looking at this image makes me a little bit concerned about just the safety element that somebody's blocked in by cars on one hand and maybe buses or other traffic coming out the other direction so how do you envision this trap pedestrian flow uh, so one of the things we looked at was also trying to and i know the craps app is coming down that hill so the speeds can be higher there too so one of the things we wanted to do was bump this put the bump the sidewalk out on roundhouse plaza and give a little bit like pedestrian um feeling on the street and make the crossing distance shorter because you're elevated up on the curb on the sidewalk and then we put the crosswalk in there and have where there isn't one now which was you know one of the traffic calming things to slow people down Make people look and then you have the park you have the parking spaces there so the lane is tight and so just given by that nature it's generally a slower speed coming down there more aware mm -hmm. um the other thing is there is no crosswalk on the west side of crass ave as there is now so part of what we did and i can't i don't know if i can point here but we tried to wiggle the curb line or the edge of pavement here slightly to gain some separation from the road and the building because the tight the site is so tight and we're kind of at the extents of where we can work with um so we did try to wiggle that a little bit and realign the parking spaces so that there is a little bit of a gap and cars aren't parking and bumpers right into the building so there is some space there um the traffic from roundhouse plaza there is a stop at the i believe there's a stop at the corner there um and you know we're really trying to focus that pedestrian um experience right at the kind of main entrance there and in that um uh image you had up um a go back. Ago, it showed it looked like maybe a walkway on the i'm so confused about it. it's this way in the picture and this way physically um onto the parking lot here maybe with some barriers there can you bring that image back up uh, yeah just tell me when i get there this one Yes, oh, uh, sorry. one ahead. So I can't tell if I'm looking at, oh, that so, might actually be a feature of the building. So is there a like a walkway in the Roundhouse, Roundhouse Plaza there around that edge of the building? Uh, on the Here. south corner of the building? Yeah. Yes, there's a there's an existing sidewalk mm -hmm. there, which we're going to maintain. Okay. Yep. So that's interesting. I, I hadn't realized that the cars on Crafts Avenue are going to park nose in pretty much bumper to bumper to the building right. yeah so they do now. So, well but it's a grass slope now right. so but now it's going to be a building so people will be perhaps enticed to walk along there but they won't be able to they'll have to cross the street and go up the... exactly and that's kind yeah. of the thinking for the bulb out and then the yeah. um the crosswalk there to kind of you know force that circulation there because you really can't go up uh, right. against the building and, that and there's a there. So heading back up towards the center of town, past those cars in this illustration, there's still some of that steep slope left. Yep. And that sidewalk that goes by City Hall and out onto Crafts Avenue will still remain. Yeah. Yep. And you feel I didn't see it in the grading plan, but you feel confident that you can make the curb ramp on the other side of Crafts Avenue work like by provision. One second there. Pretty, you know, you, you just have to. The slope of grass coming down the hill right um in that area it, luckily that area kind of starts to flatten out down there mm -hmm. so that slope it's not as steep as it was up on the hill so we're not as concerned there and 
tell me a little bit about uh, there were some uh, questions about access by emergency vehicles. Explain yeah. that a little bit more. So, um, you know, we, we spoke with the fire department and um, one thing, essentially because a lot of the emergency access comes down Crafts Avenue, the bus station is um, on Roundhouse Plaza and they're both one-way streets. We um, provided a emergency pullover right here so that the um, first responders have a place to pull into a flat surface where they can get unimpeded access to the building uh, with a curb cut in there so they can access the building easier. And then, if, and then if they're in there parked, it's not blocking the flow of traffic on Roundhouse Plaza either. Yeah, that's primarily ambulance service. So, so that you're saying would be in that ground section that the crosswalk is in the Um, that no, right here, right above where it says Roundhouse Plaza, you can see this hatched area. Mm -hmm. That would be the pullover. So can I ask another question? Well, excuse me one minute. I'm sorry. Could you stand up? Because everybody needs to hear your question. Sure. And this exact spot, it just makes seems to me like wish I had a pointer, but that that whole round corner, if it was shucked over to that side over there, it would calm that whole section down. You'd have a bigger area to pull in, people who are coming and going in the building, dropping things off. There's, there's so many unforeseen transactions that happen in front of a building, not to mention people who might want to hang out there a little bit. It seems more enjoyable to be on that side where there's trees. I think those are trees. Yep. And so in a little bit of a patio there, it just seems like they're kind of stuck on the corner there. And it's causing, I think, a little bit more congestion at the bottom of that hill. If it just swung around to that side and was more open seems to be more um, friendly. Thank you. Swing it down to the... Sw swinging it to this corner, the entrance there. To the other. That whole round thing. Still have your crosswalk and everything, but just calm that section down. And this looks already like a courtyard and much more welcoming on that corner. Why not just have the entrance there too? Oh, the entrance of the building? Yeah. Um, I think what we were trying to do is really um, engage... Crafts Avenue more than the Roundhouse Plaza piece because uh, you know it's less trafficked, and we are trying to which is less traffic the Roundhouse Plaza, uh -huh. um, and we were trying to engage both streets essentially was mm -hmm. you know the the goal. Mm -hmm. so, but yeah, that's that's my big thing. Thank, um, thank, thank you. Should we bring up the other parking lot? Sure. Yeah. Yep. Um, Understanding that it's going to be used for staging a portion of it during construction. Yep. Um, and our, our staff report um, recommends that we talk about options for reorienting that lot in the future. So I'm not quite sure what that means. I mean, I understand what it means as far as reorienting this lot, but what options are we, do we want to uh, ramp? Well, I mean, I just noted that there is uh, an evaluation um, underway to sort of think if there are opportunities to um, reconfigure the lot to make it a little bit um, safer. This lot right out here. Right. But it, there's not, it's too early in the process to know. So my, my comment in the staff memo was just, um, um, granting flexibility so you're seeing what they're showing as sort of restoring the lot to almost the same way it is today but um if there's a modification to that not necessarily requiring that they come back for an amendment if it happens that they're shifting parking a little bit maybe coming in straightening out the driveway access so it's really more a comment to um, put it on the table to um, see whether or not it makes sense for you all to approve uh, modifications that may not be shown. Because there will be a lot more pedestrian activity out there too at this point than we have right now, mm -hmm. right? right? Coming and going to the park, to downtown, coming out that way. <clears throat> 
does that go in the form of a condition that we say that we're you can note it in the approval that um that you're approving the site plan as presented um but that um modifications to that lot if if they're modifications to that lot that it wouldn't trigger an amendment or if you wanted to just leave it um to wait to see what happens and we can figure out whether it's an administrative amendment or if it's a full-blown amendment as typical but i just wanted to flag that yeah. that, that may be in the that may change sure. we don't know are there any changes proposed to the lighting in this parking lot for for safety and traffic and just the fact that there's going to be more people back here kind of day in day out well, I don't know if you want to talk about the electric utility connections and how that pole in the parking lot will be coming down. Yeah, so I there is a pole. Um, it's kind of hard to see right here, but it's just awesome. Could you maybe go to that illustration where we're looking at the massing again, but from the back door of City Hall? Um, going, going. Right there. Uh, one more. Yeah. Yep. Um, there is a pole existing on this upper parking lot somewhere about where behind where this car would be, and there is a light on that now. And I think the current discussions are to remove that pole and relocate that wire that um, jumps down below. And so, uh, one thing we'd be looking at is to replace that. The light with some facsimile because I, I i assume the electricity the uh the the electric utility is going to come from that area um, it's coming that is still uh, a little bit okay under um design at the moment where the power is coming from so Carolyn seemed very interested in getting rid of the unsightly pole and wires across there and putting them underground and then maybe putting some wall packs on City Hall and on the new building to just kind of take the place. They're pretty bad for yep. these lights out there yep. and they're, you know, massive. Um, so we just think there's a softer, nicer way to do it. Um, I would just say there's a lot of talk about how much pedestrian traffic there's going to be. This will be an egress only up here. So yes, people might exit and go into town. But for security and safety, we're going to want everyone to come through one main door, mm -hmm. um, and that'll be the one down below. Mm -hmm. So it's not maybe quite as much coming mm -hmm. and going as you would picture. And the, the plans currently show underground yeah. service to this building. Right. That floor. So current existing building. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Overhead wire from that floor. A lot of building. Wow. They're showing yeah. underground. Oh. You know, expect. Uh, there was a conversation with the national grid. There are a couple of options to take go from. And I don't know if that's changed since our walk about, but there are like the dumpsters. We hope we can use an existing transformer, but I think you're just talking about the wires that are going across this parking lot, feeding City Hall. The intention is as part of this disruptive process, we would bury them. Chris, it's on the plan. So yeah. that's, what, on, that's what we want to do. It's on the plan. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Please. I, I just didn't hear you clearly. The, the west elevation door that faces this lot yes. is only an egress door. Correct. Okay. Yeah. And can we make the assumption that during the construction, those six or eight spots on the lower half of the grass area will be obviously closed off during yeah. the whole construction period, right? Yeah. 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 So the, the there is probably in your packet, but for folks who haven't looked, um, there is a construction period kind of area. Um, which would encompass this upper parking lot as well as the parking spaces along Crafts Avenue during the construction period. We've looked at a couple of other large apartment buildings that are projected for downtown, and a couple of them uh, envision rooftop gardens and places for their tenants to 
relax on? Is there going to be access to the roof, um, the flat roofs here on this building? So up uh, there is an outdoor patio area on the fourth floor. So if you looked at the other side of the building where it steps back, that's a roof deck. So there is outdoor common. That's the only really outdoor common space for tenants is uh -huh. on that roof deck. So yes. And there could be some plants on it. <laughs> on the very tall flat roof, there are going to be mechanicals and solar panels. They're okay. not going to be an sure. outdoor place for people to hang out. All right. Pretty sure I know the answer to this, but the uh, income restrictions that are on the different units, I assume that those change over time with the median area income and so forth. Yes, thought so. Thank you. Um, is there any possibility on that where this, since it is the main entrance that I just heard you say on the corner of Crafts Avenue, just that the first floor entrance there can be pulled back a little bit so that it, there's more, it's not all happening in that half round area onto Crafts Avenue, but that stays there, but just it doesn't seem like it's recessed into the building much. And the other question I have for the town, is there, are there any possibilities of parking in the roundhouse parking lot? Well, yes, that's an easier one. There's plenty of parking in the roundhouse parking lot, but yeah. none of it can be kind of um, subscribed to this building per se. It's open to the general public. I mean, is there any plans for a parking building? Like a no, so yeah. Parking is a whole nother large issue in the city that I don't think we'll get into tonight. Right. Yeah. That yeah, would be great. It'd solve a lot of problems. But thank you. <laughs> no, we enjoy the people that um, buildings downtown don't always come with uh, tenants who want to drive. So they'll be doing other kinds of transportation. So. Um, other questions from the board? Yeah. So, okay. So let's go with the DPW comments first. If we could. Um. So um. Final. They're asking for final plans from to be stamped from um, by an engineer, especially um, concerning. The retaining the retaining walls on the northeast side, you know, against this building, municipal building, um, and they want confirmation and final plans with spot grades to um, confirm drainage um, and. Uh, I'm not seeing it. There are just details about drainage to be put in the final plans. Um, Forest pavers have been proposed in a location two to four feet away from City Hall Annex building. The proposed pavers do not meet the guidance in the stormwater handbook, which specifies a setback of 20 feet to sell a foundation. So these are not appropriate, um, get, uh, particularly given the uh, groundwater infiltration problems with the municipal building. Mm -hmm. They um, would recommend removal of the forest papers in that location. Um, Has the applicant seen these comments yet from DPW or just not yet? Okay, you'll get a chance. They're very understaffed these days. <laughs> um, and da, 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 let's see, that's basically it. Okay. Um, okay, sorry, we just have to go up to make sure it go to the last one. Yeah. Okay, Kathy says lower income people may not be able to afford parking. Um, 
and concerned, Kathy's concerned about the screening process for potential tenants of the building and fostering low income housing tenants to bring crime to the area. Um, I would like to know about the screening process for tenants. Um, when Nevada, there may be a need for signs for people who are um, blind or deaf. And can you share a bit more about the passive um, energy standards? Um, oh, okay. She said, never mind. That was answered. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't read the head enough. I just want to make sure I caught everything. Okay, that's it. Great. Great. So, you know, in terms of the screening for tenants, I think um, we have a number of uh, uh, housing complexes like this in the city, Live 155, the Lumberyard, Valley CDC does a number of other units. I think, you know, it's pretty much their industry standards. Um, I, I don't think we can ask them to do anything specific for this residence just because it's right downtown here. Um, but interesting comment, yeah, yeah. Congregate housing brings in a, a big variety of people. Um, you know, we will note that there was a letter from the uh, landlord of pro the provisions building across the street, who's concerned with people congregating outside the main entrance um, and perhaps detracting from his customers who want to go in there for a, 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 another kind of uh, experience. And uh, but. Uh, I don't see that happen, certainly down at Live 155. People congregate out there by the bike path and at other places. Um, that's going to happen. Um, I, I'm sure that with uh, the in-house managers and uh, workers that they have here from Valley CDC, if there are any issues, they'll be addressed as quickly as they can be um, for those landlords who are along Crafts Avenue. Um, do we think about closing the public hearing? Or are there other questions that we should ask the applicants? I'll move those public hearings. Yeah. Second. Okay. I have one more quick question. We flashed by the removal or the relocation of the EV parking spaces on crafts, which are very popular, pretty used quite heavily. Where are they going? I'll show you. Yes. Yeah, okay. The street. So it's, it's staying on Crafts Avenue, but just yeah. up the street near. Okay. Uh, five or ten spaces up. Somewhere. Okay. Oh, At some eight. point in time, when the while it's all dug up, so it's going up right, right, right here. The one set does provide two. Right. Thank you. Thanks. Here, no. While the street is dug up and everything's going on. Yeah, same Easter Park is truck there. Yeah. <laughs> people who are actually building. Yeah. So it, it 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 yeah, as we as we add more EV parking spaces, it it does limit parking then only to EVs, right? It, well, I guess it's the same as handicapped spaces. We need to have plenty of those, but that limits then. Um, parking for non-EV vehicles. And there's only so many spaces there on Crafts Avenue. Yeah. You folks that want to go to the building inspector's office have to find a whole nother routine. Yeah, yeah. All right, so the motion has been made to close the public hearing. There's no last comments from the audience, from the chat. Um, all those in favor, all right? All right. Um, last bit of discussion. We have a couple of conditions for the permit. Uh, one has to do with final plans that are stamped uh, in, in light of the, the comments from DPW that address those concerns. Um, we would note that uh, upon, you know, issuance of our decision that it uh, a modification to the parking lot configuration out here might come before us. Staff might make a decision whether or not it's major enough to be an amendment and come back before the board. There is a concern we're justified around the, the, the construction and how 
Um, it will impede stuff around town, especially if it's in consort with the other large construction on Main Street, but that's somewhat out of our control. Um, I don't know. I don't think there was any other conditions that we're putting on here. Um, rooftop access, exit only, lighting. When we, I think if we're just going to leave it to for staff to determine if any changes to the parking lot are, you know, major enough to come before us, we don't need to say anything because that's just what would happen, right? Okay. So that wouldn't be a condition. No, not no. So we just noted it for the minutes kind okay. of in our kind of recommendation. Okay. Yeah. I move to approve the major site plan by the Valley CDC at 27 crafts. Uh, map ID 31D-262 with the conditions so noted. Second. Second, okay, motion's made and seconded. Any discussion? No, I, you know, I'll just say that I applaud the city for taking this on too. You know, it's going to be a disruption for the municipal offices here. Um, it's going to be a big change to their operations, um, which won't be easy. But uh, I think they're putting their money where their mouth is and putting downtown mm -hmm. development and affordable housing right here in their backyard, our backyard. Um, I really appreciate the nice uh, illustrative designs and drawings you brought to us. It was really very helpful to see it from all those different angles. Um, if you could train some of the other applicants to come before the board on that software, that would be great. I'm sure we'll see some more of that later on tonight. But so thank you very much for your presentation. And uh, that's all I have to editorialize on. So Did we vote? No, not yet. Okay. We're having discussion. <laughs> I'm editorializing during discussion. Now, anyone else want to say anything? All right, all in favor of the motion to approve the project? Any opposed? Any abstentions? Abstaining. Okay. Four in favor and one abstention. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank you, Commissioners. Thank you. I don't know if we're the most likely. I didn't sign for that one. Just so you know, we can get into our Oh yeah, no, that's not the that's not that's not the reason it's ten thirty. So I feel and you know what the city's trying to do is right? I think the city is putting the money on the other issue that's going to be too far out in the area. So, you know, that's not really the I'm good. I'm ready to go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you got screens now. Yeah. Yeah. Nope. There is one in the refrigerator, but I'm not allowed to touch it. So. Yeah, Red Bull. Yeah. My son's into those now. I moved over one day. I put the edge of my fire. Because my PDF just kind of rolled in the air. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. We lost one. Big night for affordable housing. Yeah. Big night for affordable housing. All righty. Last, yeah. last, <laughs> but not least, uh, and yeah. uh, a bit beyond the stated hour, we're going to open up a special permit and make your site plan for a 109 room hotel for a 31 unit residential building by Rankin Holdings LLC, 115 times two map ID 39A 33. This is a special majority, a special permit. Thank you. Of the board on this. 
Um, and uh, I bet the applicant has a presentation. We'll try to keep this short and sweet. Um, right. <laughs> Uh, good evening, Jeff Squire uh, from the Berkshire Design Group uh, here on behalf of Rankin Holdings. Here with me tonight is Charlie Spice from uh, Trident uh, Project, they're the OPM for the project, uh, Eric Shaw from ZDS Architecture, and uh, Charles Roberts from uh, Kuhn Riddle. Um, and so this parcel you're all very familiar with. Um, for the record, it's 39A lot 33. It's a three and a half acre, slightly over three and a half acre parcel that was formerly the home of the Hampshire Gazette. Um, it's in the gateway district, a gateway district within the central business district. Um, it was, like I said, the site of the former uh, Hampshire Daily Gazette building. That building was demolished in May and June of this year. Um, so the site currently is vacant. Um, it was a four, just over a 46,000 square foot building, uh, roughly about six feet tall. Um, there were roughly about 100 parking spaces on that site previously. Um, we did um, obviously do a do a detailed uh, survey prior to demolition to document all the existing conditions and utilities. Um, that's shown here. The proposal is to construct a new uh, four-story hotel, roughly where the Gazette building once stood. Uh, that footprint is roughly about eighteen thousand square feet. Again, on on four stories. Uh, up at the front of the site, along Con Street, is a uh, 13,800 square foot, uh, three-story residential building uh, fronting uh, Con Street. Uh, the hotel, as you noted in the in the application, has got 109 rooms. There's about a 500, uh, 700 square foot uh, meeting space on the lower floor. The residential building has uh, 31 units, and um, you know, in, in general, these the site and buildings conform to the. Uh, design guidelines uh, established for this district. I will note um, as we go through these that the one um, the one little hiccup in here is the the location of the existing sidewalk on Con Street relative to the uh, front yard setback requirement. Um, and I'll point that out in more detail actually on this plan. How's that? Um, oops. Um, let's see. Can I scroll in? Yes. So um, just pertaining to that issue, so recognizing that the setback, the maximum setback for the district is 10 feet for, for the front of the building along Con Street. There's an existing sidewalk um, that is city owned that you can see it here, jogs into the property. There's sort of a rain garden feature with some street trees right along that edge of Con Street to help mitigate some of the stormwater issues on Con Street. And then the sidewalk continues along the street. The goal with this was not to disrupt that that infrastructure, um, so we can't set the that sidewalk is is now 13 feet back the back, back edge of the sidewalk from the property line, so we can't be you know within the 10 feet. We are um, we we've got a um, I think it's five to 13 feet foot setback from the back of the that sidewalk for that front building, um, just in in recognition of that um, that design um, that one criteria. Um, the parking lot consists of uh, two, what have we got, 206 spaces. We are retaining the existing curb cut. Um, there's an existing curb cut in this location for the Gazette that's roughly 30 feet wide. That's getting narrowed to 22, but it will still function as a as a um, entrance and exit to the property. Um, so that location is staying the same. There's also uh, a shared entrance um, that serves the Fairfield in further to the, I guess, plan uh, plan east. Um, that currently serves the Fairfield in. These two parking lots here um, are both part of the Fairfield property. We're simply providing a connection to the, to the remainder of the property through that parking lot um, and redistributing those spaces elsewhere on the site. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, would you go through that one more time for me? So these these small rectangular parking lots right now, um, I'll go to the existing condition, are associated with a Fairfield property. The property line runs right. down this green strip right here between the parking lot and the Gazette property, mm -hmm. wraps around and then continues down. Dumpster access is here. This access way, oops, this access way 
now that exists also functions as a shared entrance to what was formerly the Gazette property and their loading dock. We are simply bisecting that parking lot um, with this project to provide easier, more convenient access to the residential building up front. These parking lots are remaining as part of the Fairfield property. There's simply be an access easement for, for the residential building across um, in the front, but they're gonna remain separate properties. But your access, so the other access, you have one access on the north side of the property and another entrance and access on the south side? Correct. Through the, through the hotel. Through, correct. Through what is now existing as the Fairfield entrance and exit, okay. um, which offers um, access to the, there'll be a shared dumpster and trash compactor in the back of the site. Um, that current location is not going to change. Um, the main hotel lobby is, again, roughly at the front of where the Gazette building is now or once stood. Uh, there's a pork share for visitors to be dropped off. There's a bus pullout um, for, for those occasions when a larger bus may show up with, um, with uh, 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 visitors. Um, the residential parking and the residential site also include a drop-off at its main entrance. Um, and then in the back of the building, there's a, a excuse me, a common space, uh, common patio space and gathering space for, for residents, uh, covered bike parking. Uh, we've also got bicycle parking at, uh, located at the hotel, um, site lighting. Um, yeah, dumpster, dumpsters are also for the residence building. Yes, uh, there is a dumpster. There's a dumpster internal to the site okay. in this location here. Yeah. Um, just gonna scroll out a little bit if I can. Um, so again, just a general site layout plan, materials, um, all of that is is what you might expect. Traditional asphalt. Um, we've got concrete curbing, uh, more decorative paving, and concrete sidewalks uh, carrying pedestrians through the site. A series of you know aligned sidewalks and crosswalks to get pedestrians safely, you know, between between the. Um, between the site, uh, between the uses, between the buildings, out to Con Street, um, and also to the Fairfield site uh, next door. Um, Could you blow that up for a minute and tell me how a, a guest would uh, walk uptown from the hotel? From the hotel, I would envision one would come out front entrance, cross these sidewalks here, or crosswalks here, this sidewalk, and out to the edge of Con Street. Um, similarly, one could, you know, also also cross here to this, and also out out to the sidewalk along Con Street. To go to Netta. Thank to go to Netta, right? Thank you. <laughs> um, it's the Netta All right. Can you describe the dimensions of the, your um, landscape islands? So let's see. Most of the islands. Whoa, sorry. Uh, most of the islands, let's see, there's one central island in the site that divides sort of the residential portion of the site from the hotel. This one's a 10, uh, 11 and a half feet wide uh, for the most part where the bus stop is shown. There is a narrow portion to allow for, um, you know, a safe sidewalk and exiting of the bus. Um, there is uh, an existing island that... Um, Separates the two sites now. I'm guessing that uh, I don't see a dimension on that. That sidewalk is six feet wide, so I'd imagine this this island, this strip here, is probably eight feet wide. Um, the only other one we have is is this narrow one here to separate um, these two head in spaces. Uh, this was something that was pointed out um, after the original plans went in. Really, where you know what the constraint is, this end of the building and the property line to be able to fit in, um, you know, a, a three rows of parking essentially. Um, so this island is currently shown as four feet, with some breaks to allow for stormwater drainage to pass through. Um, but that's the only other island. Uh, we do have one, I'm sorry, in the back here with EV chargers. This one is five feet wide, but we've got a series of uh, light fixtures and EV chargers um, within that within that island back there. 
So the island requirements in the code in the zoning require six foot um, landscaped islands between parking land. Um, just continuing through, just highlighting stormwater real quick. Um, currently, the entire site, with the exception of some um, pseudo uh, uh, infiltration basins in the back where the loading docks were for the uh, for the Gazette building, the entire site, including the majority of the building, drains straight out to Con Street right now. Um, it is directly into catch basins pipe and out to con street. So we are capturing, um, all of that water detaining what is required by the new, uh, stormwater standards. Um, in addition, we're treating TSS removal as well as phosphorus and nitrogen removal, which is also required now. Um, that is, we are maintaining, uh, retaining two connections to the con street line, but all of this system has been designed to, um, reduce the amount of flow coming off that site. Uh, currently, and and has the DPW looked at these plans and oh, yes. calculations? Yes, I haven't seen final comments, but we have okay. been in yeah constant conversation with them over the last month or so. Um, so this does require a separate stormwater permit. Yeah. Um, DPW did not close out and issue a permit, which means the planning board can't close its hearing. Um, so it probably makes sense for you to identify any issues that you want to address from this um, for continuation. The uh, the rear of the property, it's a really steep slope. Mm -hmm. The abutter there is Smith College yes. up top there. Yes. Um, and that's going to be buffered. That's going to be separated by a chain link fence. Um, there's plans. a fence. I believe there's a fence along that edge of the property there now. I think that would be the intention is to leave that in place. Yeah, no, I don't think there's nothing. Okay, there may, okay maybe there isn't then. Yeah, I apologize. Okay. Okay. Right. <clears throat> You've got a lot of activity up there on top of that hill, unfortunately. Sure. Um, a lot of trees coming up slow too. It would be hard to walk. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just before we leave yep. that parking lot, uh, Carolyn, I'm not familiar with all the specs for the gateway district. Um, is there a open space requirement for a project? Uh, um, did you do an open space calculations? Uh, there was no open space requirement. Um, there were a number of, you know, frontage occupancy requirements. Um, you know, there were a number of other design standards and guidelines that, that certainly came into play. Um, Okay. Um, part of the so part of the parking requirements requiring landscape islands are those things um would comprise the open space as opposed to a percentage. percentage. Although in the gateway it may be I'm just gonna double check. Yeah. Five um, percent. Because right, usually we look at five percent or ten percent of green space. Um there's a lot of parking here. Mm -hmm. Um and I'm sure you did a calculation by what was expected by hotels and residences and maxed out what you could for parking spaces. Yeah, I mean, in, in terms of parking, there's, I mean, there's a, there's a slide further down um, that highlights, you know, the, the, the assigned spaces or, or allotment of spaces for each of the uses. So um, I can certainly speak to that um, further down. Um, Again, just some of the other utilities we're bringing. Um, there's an existing water line or existing water lines to the Gazette. We're going to, or to what was the Gazette building, we're trying to reuse those to the extent possible. Um, we will need to bring in some new services um, to support both the hotel and the residential building. Um, so those are shown here. Um, planting plan um, as required. Again, just um, as Carolyn noted, um, you know, extensive planting and um, you know, internal to the parking lot and around the buildings um, to soften the the effect of you know the large large expanse of of parking. Um, lighting this again conforms to city um, city standards. Um, we've got a series of um, dark sky compliant um, shielded downlit poles, LED poles. Uh, I think they're twelve foot tall along the perimeter in an effort to keep those 
levels down. Um, they're 16 foot tall in the center of the site. But again, the, the, the ability and beauty of these LED fixtures is that we can be very direct with those lights and, and ensure that we're not um, casting light beyond where, where is needed. So um, this, this plan um, was developed with some other lighting consultants that are very familiar with, with the city regulations. Um, again, here's just sort of the, that parking diagram. So the Fairfield Inn, there's 43 spaces that they um, that they occupy in in this area here, as well as um, a handful of spaces on this edge of the site. Um, so we're providing those 43 spaces back for them. Um, the hotel requires 111 spaces. Those are you know allotted in what's shown in blue. And again, these are it's a shared parking lot. This is really just sort of a demonstration of um, you know the capacity. Um, the residential building, um, there's 31 units. We're providing 52 spaces. Um, you know, uh, it's, it's not quite two per, um, uh, assuming that there's going to be some need for visitor spaces and, um, you know, otherwise, so, um, and the hotel obviously has, has their requirements. So, um, you know, I, I wouldn't say we're necessarily maxing it out. Um, there were some other schemes that did have more parking. Um, but this provided enough to to make these um, these these uses um, and these buildings you know viable and and uh, attractive. Um, the project is anticipated to be developed in phases. Uh, first phase would be the hotel um, in the back of the site. Um, that would also include that first phase would also include bringing in most of the major utilities. Um, um, you know, we hope to shortly thereafter um, uh, resume on on phase two. There may be a period where there's some loam and seed area at the front of the site for a period of time, but the hope is to you know launch right into phase two um, shortly after construction of and opening of the hotel. Um, and I think I'll turn it over to, to Charles if you want to talk through the residential building quick. Yeah. And... Hey, everybody. I was so relieved when you got the AV up and running. I was experiencing anxiety. <laughs> um, thank you, Charles Roberts with Cumital Architects. Um, we designed the uh, the housing component of, of this project, um, what, uh, that phase two. Um, just to uh, walk through, let me just make sure I'm doing this right here. Um, uh, just to sort of set up, set up the context a little bit here. Um, I just took some... Went out and took some photos. This is this is our site right here with the Fairfield Inn, sort of across the existing parking lot from which is where our our site's going to be located. Um, to the right is the uh, is the elderly housing, uh, six or seven story building. The, all the buildings along sort of the north side, of, uh, the south side of Con Street are these larger larger scale kind of buildings. This is the uh, the the senior center um, seen um, from the seen from the east, and then also just a direct direct on shot. So lots of, you know, lots of space between the buildings, kind of a kind of an ad hoc character. It's really, it's, it's a, it's a great neighborhood. It has a lot of character. Um, these are the, uh, the buildings along the north side of the street. Um, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I know everybody knows these, but it's helpful to see them, I think, and, you know, as you're, as you're sort of uh, <clears throat> looking at the project. I always kind of love this building here, this blue building yeah. with these yeah. steep roofs. Um, so across the street, there are lower buildings, you know, these, these, these kind of like early yeah, century uh, brick, brick structures. Um, this, this office building in here, which is a two-story yeah. building, and this, I think this is a residence. It's uh, lots of character, and then another, um, I think this is either an office or a, uh, or a, or a multifamily home here, so just kind of setting the stage for a little bit for the context of the of the, uh, the site in general. Um, this is our building plan, so it's a it's an L shaped um, L shaped building. The courtyard that Jeff was talking about is in this area here. I have some images we can we can look at we can look at later. There's two primary entrances. This is the main entrance right over in here, which which um, opens out onto the Porco Share. Um, this is uh, this is Con Street along this dimension line here, and this is a, another significant entrance and exit out of the building here, which connects to the sidewalk. And there's a, a crosswalk immediately aligning with this with this other entrance exit here, also to, to um, just to sort of um, foster and create pedestrian connectiveness between the site and the building and, and downtown. Um, 
whoops so that's, that's the first floor the second that's this is the second floor it's basically stacks right over the first floor um there's a this this is an entry entry mechanical and and mailboxes here on the first floor on the second floor it's a common space and on the uh on the third floor of this area becomes uh another unit um and so the, you'll, you'll see that these each of these living areas is kind of articulated as a as a bump out in the building, which has a couple of things. It, it it gives a little more space for that living for the for the living room also. And as you'll see in some of the exterior views, it starts to create a rhythm of bays, which is something that that uh, the uh, along the building and creates a vertical proportions, which are things that are talked about as being important in the uh, the design guidelines. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. This is a roof plan. This this will be a uh, an all electric um, high performance building. Um, uh, the uh, the the photovoltaic photo the PV panels are orient, all oriented to the south and the west, and then we're using the uh, the, the northeast corner of the building here for um, for uh, air to air heat compressor air air source heat pumps. Um, the elevations are going to be a um, combination of a, of a stone base for durability and to create that, that, that level that's, that's um, of, of, for, for the base level of the building um, in, in conformance with uh, the design guidelines, vertical proportioned windows, um, glassy, uh, glassy entrance points, um, canopies mark marking entryway here and you can see these you know the vertical sort of uh composition of these bays and also um taking these groups of windows and creating vertical groupings so you start to read a rhythm down the building and it's, it's a, an interpretation of so sort of the uh of what we see historically but you know rendered in different kind of materials and 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 it does the same sort of thing in terms of breaking up breaking up rhythm and creating its own its own sense of, of space but but in a more modern way. So the materials would be, as I said, stone base, and then uh, horizontal fiber cement and composite trim siding. Um, this is this is an image from the east looking down. This is the this is the the, the drop off that Jeff was talking about earlier. Um, you see the uh, this is the view down down Con Street. And you can see the uh, the mass of the of the new proposed hotel right off here to the left. This is a view um, looking towards the uh, I guess that's the east southeast. So uh, this this is the Fairfield Inn that's existing the proposed mass of the hotel, and this is our our whoops our building here. So this is that uh, crosswalk connection I was referring to that connects in the uh that that um northern entry in, into the building and um, this is the, the land this is the existing sidewalk here that jeff was talking about and ex the existing trees along that edge which is a which is a great stormwater uh, management device and and um it's the buffer zone buffer planting zone between the building and the sidewalk is also helpful in terms of more additional stormwater and also because we have first floor residences finding a way to give them a little bit of screening buffer um for the the pedestrian um, activity on that sidewalk. Um, you can see the connectedness here with the uh, the the uh, walkway from the proposed new hotel into this park area and back. This is uh, looking down into that courtyard space. Might be landscaped and hardscaped, and just a nice, cool outdoor outdoor area. Cool and the temperature wise, not cool like cool, but you know. Is there? planned kind of benches or picnic tables or anything within that courtyard yeah there will I, I, I I imagine will be street furniture and yeah benches and sitting walls um it's a view looking kind of more of an elevation view looking straight on at the entry point um another view of the entry from con street this is this is kind of more of an eye level view of that courtyard that gives you a sense of the scale and the sitting walls and benches and opportunity just for people to hang out and converse and look at their iPhones. That's the entrance on the, the north side. Looking down Con Street. Oops. 
right. so, so maybe outside of our purview, but um, I'm just curious. So what, what kind of residence terms are we thinking? So this here? is condominium. Oh, it is? Yeah. Market okay. rate, market rate condominium housing. They're all one and two bedrooms. Um, um, and uh, yeah, so the, the you know, the, 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 the sort of the market viability of this thing will all be determined on <clears throat> what development costs are and what the, what the market will bear in terms of, you know, sale price of units. So the, the, the math on all that will be done. Can you, what was the square footage on that building again? Um, so the vital statistics on the building, it's a 13,800 square foot footprint for a total building area, for a total gross area of about 41,400. There's 31 units and the height of the building is about 34 feet. Okay. Roughly I heard 13,000 total and I could not figure out how you no, were 13,000 on units in there. Like, 13 oh. eighths the footprint. Yeah, Thank you. sorry about that. <laughs> um, and then let's see if I can do this here. Oops, failing, it's failing spectacularly. So that's looking, so you can see that right now, it's just a, it's just a gaping hole in the, in the, in the streetscape right now. So I think this development is going to do, is, is going to really do a great job of filling this up. And um, there's kind of the, the before and after view. And then, uh, I think I have one of from this angle too, looking up and up the street. So that's the uh, that's the uh, the condominium portion of the show. Yeah. Oh, there yet? You want to next slide? I think it should be the hell yeah. At the end of the presentation. Thank you. Hi, Eric Zulena, Managing Principal of ZDS Architecture and Interiors. I was early introduced as Eric Shaw. He's my colleague, uh, project manager for the project and also associate principal. And I'm going to try my best to fill in for him. Uh, ZDS is an architecture and interior design firm. We're in uh, offices in Providence and Washington, D.C. And I founded the firm back in 2015. We focus on hospitality. We also focus on multifamily, mostly market uh, rate upscale products. This is a home to uh, a home to hotel by Hilton. It's an extended stay product. Extended stay just means that every guest room has a kitchenette in it where people can stay for longer periods of time. So a little bit less transient than uh, other flags that you guys that we were all accustomed to. Um, we also, as mentioned earlier, there is a there was a trade off. Uh, the prototype calls for 111 rooms, but there was a real uh, uh, re uh, strong requests from ownership to make sure that we provide a meeting space. That meeting space is not only a revenue stream, but an opportunity for community to gather. Uh, that happens in uh, the Fairfield next door quite often. And, uh, you know, we, we think that's a refreshing way to uh, get community uh, to gather here in this hotel. Um, the home to brand is, is a more contemporary style. It's uh, this is very, very prototypical home to uh, very bright colors, uh, very uh, exciting arrival point with some outdoor furniture, uh, uh, trellises, uh, bike uh, uh, bike stations for parking. Uh, the rear of the building has a beautiful pool, an indoor pool that would be used by uh, hotel guests. It also has a grilling station outside uh, with some additional overhang structures. So, um, you know, it's a, it's a, you know, relatively speaking for hot prototypical hotels, this one is uh, very much indoor, outdoor, uh, public space experiences on the front and the rear of the property. Um, this first floor plan is actually showing uh, just a floor pattern in the front there. And it was also called out earlier that uh, there is a van drop-off space, a bus drop-off space, because it is often, it's common for uh, larger groups to be visiting this hotel for and, and staying for uh, a, a good uh, length of time. Uh, Four-story uh, structure, 109 rooms already mentioned, about 65,000 square feet, uh, a little bit taller than the residential property in the front. Uh, this one is, uh, four, I'm sorry, I'll just check my notes here, 43 feet, seven inches with the elevator overrun. It ends up being about 50 feet. Uh, I, I skipped through the guest room floor plans because they're very prototypical. 
Thank you. Yeah. Uh, four elevations. You know, uh, we we were not asked to bring any uh, beautiful uh, 3D rendering of this, uh, but I am showing you a black and white uh, elevations with a palette of finishes in the top, uh, the top end of the of the uh, sheet. Um, basically, we have a stone veneer that wraps the bottom of the building for durability, and we think that that would match the the multifamily component of the, of the site that was earlier discussed. And then as you move up into the building, it's an exterior ins uh, insulation finish system and multiple colors and the color palettes there. It is, it's intended to be a relatively vibrant package uh, palette of color, uh, the blues and the teals uh, and the, uh, and the uh, more lime green color. That lime green color is the one used least, but it is an accent color for this flag. Showing the rear uh, on the top center is the pool enclosure, uh, which is wrapped in a masonry product. And then to the left of that is that outdoor grilling station. On the uh, bottom is your uh, side short elevation. Looking on the right hand side, you're seeing the section through or side elevation of the pork Uh Thank you, Jeff. Uh, this is a colored uh, rendering of the product and um the the elevations uh we we actually we we have contracted through construction administration we actually do have uh just delivered yesterday hot off the press 100 percent construction drawings uh which is coordinated with mechanical electrical plumbing structural fire alarm fire protection uh so we're really ready to go here um the 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 elevations the the facades have slid just a little bit to uh, just to uh, accommodate a new prototype by Hilton that would came out just a just a short while ago, um, but the um, uh, my, very very minor, almost unrecognizable uh, shifts in that elevation. All the colors and all the products materials the same. Yeah, and I just included some images. So there is a, a ground sign at the existing entrance um, to the Gazette property, and so these are just some examples of the sign package that would uh, be included on the site. more permanent uh, signage package, pylon signs, et cetera. Yes. Uh, a little we bit of a blow up of the logo and the channel letter display that's on the building. Same. Yep. We really don't have any jurisdiction over the signage either on the building or freestanding signs other than where they're located, especially in terms okay. of the driveway. But. Right, so whatever you're seeing in the plans, um, you're not going to determine whether it's compliant or not. They have to apply separately. And if it's not compliant, it goes to the other. So that, that's the close of the hotel component of this presentation. Uh, obviously here to answer any and all questions you might have. Thank you. Thanks. So we got the residence component, we got the hotel component, we got the site plan. Guess that's about it. So I would identify, um, I recommend identifying any issues that you want to see addressed for yep. the continuation. I have, it seems kind of silly because we're always asking for EV stations and it's a massive project and I'm going to talk about EV stations, mm -hmm. but there's piles of EV stations behind the uh, hotel. I don't see any for the residence building. Is there a re reason why there aren't some up closer to the residence building for them to use? Um, not necessarily. I think, um, you know, it's, it's something we've certainly talked about. Um, uh, again, I think being phase two of the project, I anticipate that certainly some will be added because there is a demand for them. Yeah. Um, that um, that I would envision that there will be a bank of EV chargers in that second phase somewhere. So, um, I Jeff, can you talk about? It seems like maybe some of them are proposed and some of them are are future. Is that? Um, there are. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to get to this. It looks like maybe there's 10 that are being proposed, and then there's spots for future ones. So there are, right. So there's 10 spaces that are shown, 10 chargers shown there. 
currently there's another 14 that are proposed. Um, maybe Charlie can speak to more, but I know some of that is the agreement with the EV companies and, and how those finances play out. So I think the goal is to install as many as we can back there. Um, but again, a lot of those negotiations are sort of ongoing with, you know, with a, with a supplier and the. I would, I would want to make sure that we do have some up at the residential building. Um, yeah, I think we want to. going to park their car behind I, the hotel that lives up in front. I think just based on your, your parking mm -hmm. lot count, if we kind of use that, it's, what is it? One per 15. Yeah, our standard. So if we provide that ratio for the residence building, yeah. where do you have 55 spaces or something? Yeah. Right. 52, I think. Right. Yeah. yeah. So if we would, that gets us like maybe four. Goes yeah. to four that are. So if we have four spaces, two, two right. charging stations for four spaces mm -hmm. by the residence building. At least considering they're going to be market rate condos, I would assume I'm many of those folks are going to mm -hmm. be purchasing EVs. Right, but that's a business decision for them. Yeah. Um, but I would at least want to get our standard. So you're talking about the conduit for four spaces, right? No, um, chargers. Yeah, I agree. Chargers. Wait, that's our, our standard is. Yeah. So when completed, one, it's all. Yeah, yeah. One charging space for 15 parking spaces. Mm -hmm. I, I just want to think about the residence lot as kind of its own thing, even though it's sure. a shared lot, like let's have them closer to the building. Yeah. No. And if you want to put more closer to, the, to that building, I, I think it's probably a good business decision, but that's your business, not ours. And then I, I think you need, um, I think the math will tell you, you need 11 total so right now you're showing 10 total um, oh for the initial yeah for the initial you need 11 i don't think you need to do 11 so you'll have to do 12 and you know four near the residence building at least so 12 total 12 total and stub up as many as you want for future, but oh yeah, twelve installed when you get your activate cheap a bit. Yeah. Good. Um, Helen, do we need to provide a, a a waiver regarding the front sidewalk easement? That little conflict we had with the city street <laughs> gate. Does that have to be a waiver so from the? That's part of the special permit. Actually, yep. is a um, for a greater. Um, setback mm -hmm. um so that would be part of your consideration does it make you know in this situation does it make sense to to approve the setback how does that work in terms of this staging i mean it's interesting so the first thing that's going to go up is the hotel way at the back of the site and then hopefully soon but maybe not immediately the building goes up in the front that still doesn't meet the setbacks but is pretty close i mean is there a time limit on that? What happens mm -hmm. if something goes awry and it never goes up? Like what, uh, I'm sure their applicants very motivated to get it up, but I'm just curious about, could it, it, could it be years and years and years before that actually happens? That's That's a really point. good question. Um, and maybe it makes sense for um, the continuation to have that conversation to have a better plan about um what is allowed to be built in the front like if they're saying they're building the building and then they'll build all that parking but not the build the residential building so mm -hmm. that is a setup for i think a worse scenario than if um you know they were it was clearly sort of left in a less finished mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so you could also put a time on it. Well, I mean, you mm -hmm. could um, say phasing potentially, and then if that if the market changes, they need to come back with an amendment or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is to put post um, a bond, letter of credit, or something like that, mm -hmm. um, that's released. You know, if they pull it out and hang it. 
Um, but maybe the applicant can think about those, that scenario between now and the continuation. So when do the, they want to continue? Um, I haven't seen the DPW comments yet, but I feel pretty confident that we can come to a resolution to those comments pretty quickly, given where we are in the conversations we've had. Um, notwithstanding other any major concerns or questions, I think we'd be prepared to come back as soon as we could. There was the parking the island size issue, four foot versus six foot. Yeah. In the back, I think is also smaller. Um, they're showing a 22 foot dry aisle. Um, we don't require 22 feet. It could go down to 20, or maybe they could shave off a foot from each, you know, dry aisle. It's a little odd number, but it might be less noticeable. Do a 21 foot aisle. Yeah. So next, when's our next meeting? September 14th. Um, 11 30. They're already. Stan, we're going through some things so that they can come yeah, back to know. that I'm complete package. Forward. Yeah. So September 14th, you already have multiple items. Um, I'm actually not going to be at that meeting. Sarah's going to um, host the planning board meeting. Um, it's it's cool open up. It is. Uh, um, so September 28th would probably be more appropriate to continue. We don't have any items on the agenda, so this could be at 7 o'clock. Okay. Uh, it does. I think I think certainly with winter pending that there's a desire to get things moving if we can, just because I think they would like to break ground with the hotel if they can. But I um yeah we had a lot on the docket tonight yeah. you can see we're here we are 11 30 we're not at our best right now I neither really are you I, I i assume um yeah and i don't i'm not sure what else is on for the 14th but uh <clears throat> it might be pushing it a little bit um i can pull yeah. up the agenda we just posted it or not posted but we did the legal notice um uh, I would certainly come prepared just to work through any of the questions and address those immediately. And so if you posted it, are we too late already? No, this doesn't need to be advertised because that, ah, that was the advertisement yeah, that yeah. we did. So sorry, just don't so. And we yeah. don't need to go through the whole presentation either. We can just cut right to the mm -hmm. comments. Right. right. Yeah. Well, but of course, then public, we don't have a lot of public here, whether it's late at night or there's not a lot of abutters that are concerned about this, no, but sure. if they came back in, then. Well, they would be at the end of that one, too, though. Yep. Are you going to be at the meeting? No, I don't think so. We need five for the social permit, that yeah. means four here, so. Um... Because only us four can vote on it. Um, if Stacy comes in or if uh, uh, David. David, David comes. I mean, they could review the video. They have to go through the, you know, the oh, right, right, right. Mm -hmm. yeah. They were here. Right. Do you understand that little piece? I do. Yes. yes. Yeah. The it's it's open house at the high school that night. Yeah. No. That's not going to change whether it's the fourteenth or the twenty eighth um, either way. True. True. Other than right. other than Melissa sure. would be here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we need five, right? Yeah. yeah. And the that, that I might be able to get here. Oh, by 10 30 or so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hope not. Yeah. I hope the open house eight, doesn't go out. 8 8 8 8 30. Yeah. yeah. I might be able to get here. Okay. Oh, we won't well, get to this by then. Which I can't. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to get here the following two weeks. Uh, ah, okay. The second meeting in uh, November, I'm away. Okay. Oh, so it so sounds. Second in September? Yeah. In November. September, September, sorry. <laughs> All right. So if you could come later in the evening and miss the first couple of applications, yeah, that would right. be great. And that'll that'll get us our five, right? Yep. Okay. Uh, as long as all four of us don't come down with COVID or something. Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Sam's gonna quit the planning board. Need to move forward. <laughs> it's eleven thirty. We're figuring out how to move forward, Sam. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
heavy large projects like you had. Yep. Um, yep. So actually, Jeff's okay. other project on Lyman Road is at seven fifty. It's a scheduled one for um for that's the third one. Seven five zero. There actually, there's also the continuation of um, 420 North Main Street um, in Leeds, the, the one that you saw last uh, Baron and Jacobs, yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's on at seven. Then we have the three new ones. Okay, of course, that's it. Let's do it. So it looks like 830 at the earliest. Yeah, that's good. On the 14th. On the 14th. Okay. And you, you're pretty clear about the other items yes. that you're going to come back to us with? Uh, not yet. Not yet. We want to make sure that the, the trickiest one might be the whole phasing thing and how we work that out as a condition with the residential building. For what it's worth, uh, the owner of Mitchell is out of office. He would like to do both phases at the same time if he could, could finance it. Sure. But the bank. The bank he's working with now is not going to go that far. Sure. They're doing the hotel only. Yeah. But he would like to do, I mean, it's it's a, it's an asset that's sitting there, not generating revenue. Yep. I believe it. We just want to have some assurance mm -hmm. that it's going to happen. Absolutely. Can appreciate that. Yep. Yeah. Good. All right. So we're not closing the public hearing because we're continuing it. So is yeah, there a, like motion? a motion to continue the public hearing uh, until? 8.30 p.m. on September 14th. I second. All in favor? Any discussion? All right. All those in favor? Um, Carolyn, just before we adjourn, do we ever look at any chat? Do we, if there's somebody out there in Zoom who wanted to comment on this or raise a suggestion? Everyone is gone. Everyone is gone. All righty. I move to close the meeting. Not yet, Sam. I, I hear you're frustrated, buddy, but we just hang in there, man. We just want to, I think we have a set of minutes we want to approve. Yeah. So I move that we approve the minutes of 727. You know, I second. Great. Okay. Motion's been made. Seconded. All those in favor of approving the minutes? Great. Unanimous. Is that the only administrative thing, Carolyn? Cool. No, that's good. There we, we go. Close the meeting. Second. Motion has been made to adjourn the meeting at, uh, what is it, 1130? 1131. 1131. Yeah. Tell me about the phone here. I don't know what. Ah, uh, okay. Thanks. Thanks.